Because you've got I powerful was... legs. How did you get the physique? Was it gym or how did you get the physique? Um, I've always been that She's actually physical. not got powerful legs. Do you shower in your dressing room? Do you have a shower on the day of a fight or not? Tell us about the tattoos. Shut the fuck up, oh, you yeah. little prick. But then I've got the phoenix. Hey, prick. So I'll take it from Bob every day of the week. An absolute disgrace. I'm sure this... no one will mind. Move him out of here, that Daryl. Ricky had to go over for his fighter because he risked getting abducted and sold into sexual. I never said that. <laughs> Both have been rape victims. I'm not watching Frank Buglioni live on Saturday night. <laughs> Out of your mind. Jesus Christ, get yourself a life. He's actually a uh, priest. Yeah, yeah. It's because his brother John Fury eye gouged him. What have I told you all this time? He's going to end up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a hand out. Boxing, um, Natter's messenger group. Oh, they're going to, oh, I'm going to be the king. Jay Bump, you know what I'm saying? Well, hello everybody and welcome to the 558th edition of the Boxing Asylum Nuttos podcast. I'm your host Steve Wellings and joining me on the call this evening we have Andy Patterson and Matty Di Gialonardo going live on YouTube from 8 o'clock every Sunday evening. The ad-free Patreon RSS feed updates shortly after the show concludes. Hello to everybody listening through the week on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Sports Social. Don't forget to leave a review on the podcast player of your choice throughout the entire month of February, which we're on to now. Nothing less than five stars is acceptable. Don't forget as well to join us over on patreon.com forward slash boxing asylum if you want to get in on the prediction league. We've got the WhatsApp group as well, other bits and pieces. Shout out to Danny Young. He did a show last night wrapping up the weekend action. He was joined by Zekonomics as well. Uh, Justin, the North Carolina assassin, jumped on. It was about an hour or so. You can catch that in all the usual places. We'll be talking Conor Ben shortly. Fury got cut as well, if you haven't heard. Tiafimo Lopez is back on Thursday. Shiraz, Shakua Stevenson, marvellous career. Unfortunately, he's now retired. Value of the week's questions, comments, and a little bit more. We'll start off in the Wembley Arena, Saturday the 3rd of February. Sky TV, boxer, boring Ben Shalom Andy, as Dan Aziz went down over 12 rounds to Joshua Buatzi. 109-117 times two and a 116-110. A couple of knockdowns just skewing things at the end there. Commonwealth and British light heavyweight titles on the line. I thought the fight, Andy, was okay. I thought it was a decent scrap. Never really lifted off. One thing I noticed early on, it never changed as the fight went on. Aziz wasn't coming forward. He just wasn't explosive enough. I think his footwork was a little bit too slow to just get him in range without Buatsi picking him off first. Yeah, and I also think maybe Buatsi had a bit better reach. He did look like mm. he was slightly you know, bigger guy as well, to be honest with you. And you see, I think maybe the speed of Buatsi, um better... I think maybe just slightly a better all round fighter, actually. I mean, that's no disgrace to Aziz, who, as I say, he's, he's well respected for what he's done in the sport. So you see, couldn't get the shots off, and Boatsy's finding body shots, especially the left hook, having some success with the right uppercut and that as well. He dropped, was it the 10th or 11th? I think it was 11th, sorry. And um, he obviously had his moments in that as well. Aziz, he was trying to catch him with the, with the right hand, but it was obviously, it was, it was more in type of, you know, in, in response to what Boatsy was doing. Obviously, there was moments when they were getting caught in, in, in the pocket. They were both having 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 moments now, but I did think in the end it was it was it was a clear win for for Blatts. And my stream cut out running about halfway through the twelfth round, so I don't know how it finished. Uh, if it was a, if it was a big win, but someone did say to me that um, they felt Blatts could have pressed for the stoppage uh, potentially in the twelfth round. But I was also flipping between that and the Conor Ben fight as well at the same time, so I got kind of caught out. I didn't know that the Ben fight was on so early, actually, to be fair. So. Why did um, Bartsy step off, Andy? Was it, is he just that kind of character? Is it the fact that they're mates and all? Because I think he should have made a statement in those last 20 seconds and let his hands go. 
Well, I, said, I, I, caught, I didn't catch the last 20 seconds, to be fair, mate, but I said, right. I, I'm, I'm only basing it off what someone says to me. If uh-huh. it's your saying you could, you could have let it go, then, I don't know, maybe it was like a killer instinct or maybe just didn't read the signals. Yeah. I don't know. his mindset, you know? Possibly, possibly, but you've seen it afterwards and that as well. I've read the reports and that, you know, they're, they're all up there saying, you know, it's a pleasure, good mates and that type of stuff, so... Mm. They both got paid, then they both come out the other end okay. So other than that, mate, what can you say? I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's we mentioned it last week. I think it's Boatsy's. It would be Boatsy's best win. People are now kind of semi shitting on it because it's you know it's, it's domestic level and that. But at the same time, you know, as easy as earning stripes, you know, it's not. It's not. No, everybody can go out and do what he done at the same time. So um, you know, fair play to Boatsy. Had to do what he had to do, but that was that was a final eliminator for Bivol's title, I think, and. I don't know, mate. It's just, again, it's all down to levels at the end of the day. Um, so I, I don't know what they're going to do because obviously we want to see Bivol against uh, Baterbe of next. So I don't know what would happen, but. Oh, his, know, ex- was, his was, excellency was... has that handled, Andy. Well, I suppose he's a pretty little head. head. <laughs> uh, hopefully, yeah. But as I say, it was. Um, as, for, as, as for getting dropped, it was. I suppose he was a wee bit annoyed, I suppose, not he got, he got up, but. Um, other than that, it was. I think Boatsy stuck to his, his game plan, which was simply get on the jab, work the body when he had his moments, that, and obviously counter upstairs with the right hand. And sometimes as easy was over his over his front foot, he was getting picked off with uppercuts and that as well, as 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 we mentioned that. So I just think he was also finding, you know, you know, he was manoeuvring well, and he was actually finding, you know, room to kind of land his left hooks and that as well, so his both head and body. So as easy as most, I think he's. he's the, the main shot he was looking for was basically his right hand, and he was having some success, but not, you know, no great. But I just think that also the hand speed and that as well was allowing Boatsy um, to have the major success in the fight. So no complaints about the score, well, about the winner, sorry. Yeah, and no, I agree. <coughs> and Buddy McGirt was shouting, "Move forward, Dan, move forward." He just wasn't able to implement those tactics. MB says powder puff shots from Aziz, no respect, and there's the respect or lack of from MB. Chris Butler says Boatsy needs to step up now, seeing him beat domestic level fights. Yeah, look for that WBA. If it's not going to be a shot at Bivol, maybe a vacant title, or he could fight for all the straps. Who knows? Uh, Aziz Matty went down twice in the eleventh round. A slippy canvas. We've seen it so many times before. It seems exceptionally slippy. This one, maybe some kind of material or something. I know technically a punch landed on both occasions. Was it enough to send him down? On both occasions uh, I'm a little bit sceptical. That first one, it seemed... I know the punch landed, so technically, as I said, it should be a knockdown, but that first one it was powder puff blows, really, from Boatsy and Aziz hit the canvas, but I think that was a, a slip uh, from what I saw. The, the se- Yeah, I agree with that. I thought the second one was a lot cleaner. Um, but I, you know, I still think the canvas came into play and, you know, I, I know, thinking, you know, you look at the scorecards and thinking, uh, almost like Boatsy walked it, but at the, but that means that if two of the cards were, had one sixteens for him, that means entering the 11th round, if Aziz won those last two rounds, he was going to be able to eke out the draw. And I got to tell you. He was winning that 11th before that bad knockdown call and that slip on the canvas. He was coming on pretty nice. Um, so I think that definitely might have changed the course of the fight. Uh, you know, uh, Blotzi very well might have ended up winning the 12th, um, you know, on his on his own without the canvas. Um, had that not been an issue. But uh, but I, I, I think it's a shame because there was a chance to have a, a nice little draw on our hands there. Um, with Aziz working his way back into the fight. Um, Boatsy, obviously the more athletic fighter, the better selection. Um, I, I, I had this thing, you know, he's a little bit more athletic, a little bit more upper body movement, Steve, but for some reason, Aziz kind of reminded me of Glenn Johnson, mm. uh, particularly at the distance where they like to throw their jab. It's a little bit closer than most would, uh, would tend to throw it, but they, they kind of land it before full extension and just push through and, and, and kind of keep your head back a little bit. Um, and yeah, just, <laughs> just kind of the way when, when he was doing his thing, walking forward, just the, the touches looking for the bigger shots. I, I definitely saw a little bit of Glenn Johnson in him, but th- this was a decent domestic, domestic scrap. And uh, hopefully uh, we might get Boatsy yard out of this at the end of the, uh, before all said and done. I, I think that'd be another uh, very uh, uh, good scrap to have on your guys' shores that uh, I think would put some asses in the seats. Aziz uh, per, for, uh, models himself, Matty, on Marvin Hagler, but you think that what he needs to do now is start globe trotting around the world, uh, clock up 16 losses, and go the Glenn Coffee Johnson route? Yeah, yeah, just tell everybody you thought you were robbed. 
I can on your word you go every fight you lost I, ro- I was robbed I was robbed I was robbed um you know and eventually you'll get your chance well Chris Butler's with you he said I had 20 pounds on the draw at 18 to 1 uh, Thomas Newman says Aziz was fighting his own self-confidence looked nervous in the ring walk and half the intensity versus his last run of three to four fights I think that's a good observation from Thomas uh Matty just before we bring Andy back in again so that's interesting you saying about Aziz winning the 11th tidying things up trying to get towards the draw I personally felt that Aziz was never really in the fight as much as the commentators were telling us. I think it seemed to me like they were trying to keep it closer than it was to create a good fight narrative. Realistically, I thought the classier shots are coming from Boatze. Aziz's success seemed a little bit forced at times. But you're saying that you saw something a little bit different and it it was relatively close until the knockdowns. Yeah, it, and, and he, uh, based on the judges' scorecards, too, um, before that point. So, um, I, I don't know. You, I think the the way I'd best explain kind of how I saw it is that I the rounds that Boatze won clearly, I think there was a fair bit of gap between him and Aziz. But those rounds that you could find that, were, that you could give to Aziz, uh, they were a little bit more swingy, a lot of them. So, it's that, you know, kind of the nuance of scoring a little bit there. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to David Palmer. He's scoring heavy with a 9.99 injection of cash into the podcast. He says, evening, lads. Is it just me or does Boatsy do some very strange things? Stands in the pocket, not really doing much sometimes. Seems happy to have his head snapped back by jabs. I think one of the guys mentioned earlier as well, David, about he's kind of fighting himself as much as anything else. Seems like a confidence thing. And we've seen that with his decision making and his choices, both in and out of the ring. He definitely should have moved on. He's talented. He's got skills about him, but for some reason, he's never moved on to that next level for whatever reason that is. Uh, Andy, just as we close out this one before we go on to the undercard, Mark Stanton says, Aziz looked a little bit flat to me, expected more pace from him. I actually think the same as well. I thought that he would kind of come forward, put the pace on. Well, why wasn't he able to do that? Was his own limitations, his own mental limitations? Or did Buatsi hit him hard enough and often enough early on to kind of uh, keep him in his box, so to speak? Bit of a free, I think, mate, to be fair. Um, maybe there's just, there's just that seal. As I say, Boatsy will always, well, I always believe there was this, there was certainly a level about him that he could kick up to. Um, it was the, one of the biggest critics. It was just he hadn't got a chance to prove it. Maybe maybe this is, well, maybe that was the start of it, basically. But I think that just kind of proven that Boatsy uh, was, and was, was the, the, the more skilled fighter. The other thing I was just reading there as well is I forgot that Dan Aziz was actually a European champion. He's vacated the belt as well. And mm-hmm. that would have been a good payday for him as well if, uh, yeah. if he actually kept that. Eh? So clearly, maybe the Blatsy fight obviously would have, been, maybe would have been the better money. But again, that would have been a guaranteed, you know, good, what, 10, 20, 15, you know, thousand euros, pounds, yeah. whatever it is in, in the future. It's a shame. Yep, certainly is. Des says, good fight between two domestic kids. Keep our light heavies at home. Have them all fighting each other. Last night proved boxing doesn't have to be pay-per-view. Big arenas and 20k plus tickets sold. I see, Eddie's want a, he's wanting Yard against uh, Karma Smith. Was it, was it you, Matty, who mentioned Yard or was it you, Steve? I Matty did. mentioned Yard. Aye, who's it? Yard against who? Boatsy. Boatsy. Aye, Eddie was talking about wanting to get Yard against Karma Smith. Eddie just wanted to wring another payday out of him. Boatsy says that everybody on the street, when they speak to him, they always say, when you're fighting yard, when you're fighting yard, it's a good domestic scrap. They need to get over the line, get the promotions together and get Frank and Eddie's heads together now if if, uh, His Excellency has to get involved as well. But really, that fight should be... In England, Andy, you would think, wouldn't you? Yard against Buati. That's a good domestic scrap, that. That was, as Dez says, that you want to try and get the, the domestic fights made here. I mean, we've been calling for them for long enough now. Yeah, because they're not us. exactly a domestic fight if they take them abroad, right? It's, uh... Yeah, exactly. Well, there's that as well, you know what I mean? But they were taking two British names abroad. But I'm just thinking, I mean, obviously, you've got, you know, Boati's kind of highly ranked with two bodies now. He's going to go the WBA route, possibly. So that maybe means Yard maybe gets, a, gets an opening somewhere again. Um... Yeah, I would like to see. I like to see like either of those guys fight Boatsy against Yard or or against Smith. I, I, I don't know if he'd be willing to come back down to domestic level. I think this is just Eddie just trying to see if he can just like, shake shake the trees. He said he would. He the actually door. said he'd be open for the fight for the right dollars. Somewhere I saw that somewhere. So okay, how much is in that fight though? I mean, there's nothing really worth it. I mean, there's no title on the line. It's domestic bragging rights. Unless your his excellency is going to end up throwing his chip at money at it, but for what reason? Smith's not a draw. I I think because he fought uh, Canelo and Better Beev, I think that there's a fair bit of name recognition with Yard, and especially 
because people, uh, you know, sold his uh, or, or Smith bought them both. Uh, it just the people have sold his uh, their performances in one way or another, um, especially yard against Kovalev. I mean, that was a big uh, deal. Yes. And then better be he gave a wing. So I, I, I think there's enough little bit of the the edge of casual sport interest that they can make some money off of that. I can't see why not. I, Smith. If the, with the right card and the right venue in the UK, you could you could hold the two, possibly headline it, maybe even chief support or whatever, and that, providing the right card, right? But again, Smith, just Smith has that, not I've made some money, hasn't he? That's just absolute say, mate, rank know. mediocrity. And look at their two best fights between the two of them. The be- Yard's best f- performances are both losses, and Smith as well against Canelo did absolutely nothing. The blame, the weight, etc. Got beaten the shit out of him by Baturbiev. They shifted the blame onto the atypical thing, like he was fighting some kind of inhuman monster. Compare that to Andy T. Yard's two performances. Now, granted, he lost them both, but he gave Kovalev a decent version of Kovalev, a hell of a fight. Baturbiev may be roasting to glasses. Was he really ever doing that well in the fight? thought the first few rounds he gave Baturbiev <laughs> enough to handle, enough to think about as anybody has. At least he goes out there uh, and, well, dares to be great. So I don't want to use that phrase, but you know what I mean? Yard's well, won rounds. Balls on the line, man. He won rounds against Baterbi after they know. Yeah. And then they obviously we came a stop later in the half of the fight. Um, well, again, I'm just going back to what Matty's saying there. I mean, Smith's talking about, you know, if he would, he would entertain that fight if the dollars were right. But then again, really? There's, there's nothing there for that fight, so how can the dollars be right? You, you know, the dollars aren't in the UK for a for, for a big massive fight, and why would the, his excellency you know, want to go and pay for that type of money as well? I think Smith, as you say, mate, he's, he's, he's earned some money. The mid rocket that he's fought is incredible, and he's had his day, he's had his chances. Let the other guys go, you know, go and have a chat. You know what? Boatsy's not had a chance at world title. I'm going to see if he can try and challenge Baterbe or Bivo if he's too kind of make that fight happen. Well, I'm going to have a chance see if he's any good, but obviously no. But um, but Yard again, he's in a good position as well. He's the one who's getting called out here. Eddie's wanting to make the Smith fight. Matty's wanting to try and talk him into having a fight with our man here as well. So good options for him. Surprised Frank's not been out here talking yet. Me and Dominic were talking about this before, and. He made a good point. I think Smith's as good as retired, but he's not going to say that because an opportunity might come knocking, whether it's a yard, whether it's somebody else for for decent money, and he would take it rather than always oh, coming out of retirement. He's done. His mindset's not there. He's kind of not laying his cards on the table as such and, and not making a, a commitment. But I'd say he's as good as hung them up. He must have made I, some money. I still think you might see him at, at, at cruiserweight before all is said and done. <sighs> But he's been fighting. But he's been fighting like once a year since when? 2018, 2019? Yeah, give or take. You get battered by Opatoya, the holy trinity of big payday beatdowns. <laughs> Tyson Fury's want a word with you there, mate. Ah, exactly. We'll talk about Fury later on. Anyway, let's get on to the undercard. Uh, tell us in the chat what you thought of it. Uh, so uh, we had um, as Adam Azim, I think. He was. What do you think of that performance, Andy? I think Azim was pretty. He was quite explosive early on in his career, put his shots together really well against lesser opposition. As the opposition's gone up, I think he showed a bit more patience, the jab. He, he didn't throw uh, all of the heavy shots early on. He threw a few feelers out to the body, especially. Paulson looked to me like he couldn't punch. He was awkward. He was getting in and out of range. I think as the fight went on, he probably would have given him a few problems, but I didn't expect him to beat Azim. But then the old Wellington curse hit him, as you know. That's what put paid to my career, the dislocated right shoulder. He'll never be the same again. You may knock it on the head now. We've seen many fighters like that before. Very few actually come back to the peak of their powers. Dean Francis had troubles with his right arm for many, many years, and he kept on making comebacks and having operations. And I can tell you from first hand, once it comes out, it just keeps on popping out. And old Enoch Paulson, man, Andy, I'm writing off his career after this. It has seemed happened to Pascal a couple of times. It happened in previous fights as well, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. But um, did someone's commentary not say that that's that happened to him before? Yeah, and he's had knee problems and he's had his arm come out twice before. So he seems he had to give up the European title before he was the champion, wasn't he? And he had to give it up because of injury. So it's something that's uh, following right. him around. All uh, right. I was uh, in and out of this fight, to be fair, mate. Um, but what I did catch, he, he wasn't really kind of looking too hot, was he? Um, it looked like, the, well, for what I've seen it anyway, the, as he was on top of him. And I th- I thought it was, a, it was a delayed shot, actually. And then I kind of seen it from behind. It was, you know, the, obviously the shoulder goes from, what can you do, mate? Injuries happen. But. Yeah, I've I've got a mate as well. Actually, he he done his he done his shoulder or his collarbone coming off a come off a bike, and he's uh, he was he was 
out with his son one day on, on the ice and his son kind of like fell and of course he's he's, he's, ho- he's holding him by the hand and it's because he's went down with him he's pulled it back out again so it's, it's quite easily done again once you, once you damage it like that it, it never heals the same yeah well the late great MC Harry McGavick pulled mine out once in the Aye. short social club absolutely uh harry was up on the uh up on like an elevated stage and i was at the bottom and i says well harry how are you getting on he's like oh not too bad he put his hand down to shake my hand and i shook as i shook hands with him he, tr- he tried to like elevate me up to his level and Oof. pulled my shoulder out completely i was running Jesus. around after the, after the fights with my shoulder popped out he was going oh god where's a medic get a doctor get a doctor and i was like all right harry help me click it back into place so yeah a, a boxing related injury no less it, well, how Steve, let me ask you, how would you have felt if somebody that was there in attendance did a backflip in the uh, in the crowd after they saw you <laughs> separated? How would wouldn't that have make been me. Feel? <laughs> I, 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 I've never seen somebody so exuberant over somebody having a separated shoulder as Adam Azim was. That was a hell of a display that he that he put on after that injury stoppage. I, I got to tell you. I think though, Matty, when it comes to the the people who do the flips in the ring, they have to do it regardless, don't they? Like if you remember Tiafimo Lopez, he always used to do the flip. Was it like the the Fortnite mm-hmm. dance or something and he ended up on the flip and after he lost to George Cambosos and he'd done the infamous interview and all the crowd had left I remember somebody saying that he, he did the flip in the ring it's almost like a tick now like he has to do it so it doesn't matter whether your shoulder comes out uh, Matty or you've knocked someone out cold Azim has to do the flip now Gervonta you should do it off a top rope did they not? that's right for me, that, was a, that was a dangerous one wasn't it I wonder if he does similarly at somebody's funeral you, you got a question when, when does the uh, the backflip stop Flip your way six foot under into the grave. Anyway, back to Azim. Matty, what did you think of him before he was back flipping and destroying Pulse and shoulder? I I think he's a decent enough uh, fighter. I don't know that he's necessarily world level, but but uh, I, I think he's, uh, you know, uh, probably European titleist level. You know, a decently skilled fighter. Um, but I, I reckon he'll end up finding his level, you know, within the next probably 12, 18 months. Well, I'd say he is the European title level because he is the European champion. There you go. Defense. So he's he's, there you he's go. moving. In, I think he's moving in the right direction these days. No, he's hit a ceiling. Yeah. I just told you that without knowing. I yeah. <laughs> he's so, going to get no so better. Yeah, no he's he, he's at, the, at his at his best. He's probably going to be Avenation level. So you know, European titles. Have a nation rather than Marv Nation. What about the women on that card, Matty? Did you catch up with Caroline Dubois or Francesca Hennessy? I must confess, I didn't see I them myself. Didn't. I didn't. I was uh, I was in a business kind of thing uh, before. Well, when those were on, so I'll have to go back and, and check out uh, those fights. Are, are they worth seeing? I didn't watch them, so no. Okay. <laughs> Clearly not worth my time, Matty. No, no I... indictment on the girls. Yeah, that was that was all I, all I saw. I was watching and I was kind of watching simultaneously with the Connor Ben card, so it all kind of ran together. I don't know who was fighting who and where. No, me neither. Don't worry, we're coming to the Connor Ben card. Let's uh, close this one up then. Uh, Jamie Shakiva with a six round points win over Konstantin Dobvyshenko, getting me some points on the prediction league. Shout out to Joe Kennedy for running that. On to Ben Whitaker. Andy with a fifth round TKO over Khalid Gradia, degrading Gradia. In the ring, I don't mind a bit of shithousery, a bit of showboating. I've said this before. I think Whitaker is very talented. I think he's a skilled fighter and he's going to go far in the game. The only problem I have with the showboating is whenever you're doing it over guys who are just so far below your level, I think it just becomes across as a little bit classless at times. You know, you like beating up sort of like the one armed man. Mm-hmm. And Gradia had absolutely nothing to offer. If they're doing it as like Nas did at sort of European level, or, or if there's a, a bit of beef beforehand and you're beating up a rival that you hate, I'm all for that. No problem at all. I just think when you're doing it with these kind of journeymen who have absolutely no hope in hell, it just gives off a bit of a bad look. Maybe I'm just being a bit of a bitch about it. I, well, I, I take the point as well. I mean, I, I take other people's points that they like to see that type of stuff. But at the end of the day, what, what you talk about when you're in the gym for the first time, boxing's all about respect, you know? So you need to start showing people some respect because you just know someday, you know, that punch might just have your name on it and it, it just wipes you. You just never know. But I, I, I take the point because he, he's, he's fighting absolute trash, you know, burnt, you know journeyman, even, even that. That's that's fine. I mean, he's he's dancing about there like he's at a reggae party, mate. It's just it's it's just there's no need for it. It's it's fine if you're doing it at world level, right? And you're absolutely outclassing the best opponent in the world that you can face at that point. No, some jobber. 
Look some jobber, mate. I mean, anybody could have done that. Even if you might not win the fight, it looked great against the guy, but come on, fuck, man. Um, and the thing is, you hear him talk, he comes across pretty well. He, come, he does, you know, he yeah. speaks pretty, you know, so I just think he's fronting, to be fair, and whatever it, whatever it is, but look, he does his thing. All I'm saying is, if he's going to keep doing it, then just be prepared. That's it, because that day, if it does come and, you, and, you, and he, gets, he, gets, he gets caught, he gets chinned, you can, as I say, you know what's going to happen. The memes are going to appear for you know, for a bloody lifetime. And okay, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a laugh at the end of the day, and that I get it. But as I say, there's there's, there's, there's levels to it, and that as well. It's fine. Look, Naz Naz tried it with Kevin Kelly, and almost came a cropper. Tried it against uh, Barrera and got got served, and that. So there is a point when you got the levels, you can't you can't pull that stuff because someone has got your name. Like your name's Floyd Mayweather. That is, but there you go. Absolutely. Uh, Des says, Whitaker's timing is going to be just right. He'll catch the scraps of our domestic lot and the two monsters might be ready to go. Whitaker is a huge talent, Matty. Um, if Ben Whitaker were to fight Dan Aziz next, which is not going to happen, how do you think that fight would go, Matty? That's a really interesting question because you kind of wonder when Whitaker, Whitaker showboating is going to catch up with him. And I think Aziz is good enough that he could probably find a moment um, to take advantage of, but it, it it's kind of that curiosity of like, uh, just like where the level is going to be with this guy. Like he's obviously very skilled. He's very talented. He's athletically gifted. He's got uh, superb reflexes, all these great things that you can like, you know, very akin to, you know, Nassim Hamed. And people are like, oh, yeah, but Nas got found out. Nas got found out. Yeah, he finally lost against a future Hall of Famer. The highest of the high, exactly. Right. I, so I think I think Aziz is just too slow for, for Whitaker. Whitaker's too quick with the feet, too too long with the shots and that as well. He can keep it at a distance. He can he can mix it up in that as well if he wants to. I just think he'd be too fast for, for Aziz. Until fight, that's the British Commonwealth and European champion as well. So isn't but, that interesting? But, it is, but... Again, this is this is a sort of oh, hypothetical and that, but you just you just you're based not off what you see and what he's done at amateur level and that as well as as, as Des says he is he has a fantastic talent, no question about it. But there's just certain things that you want them you want them to to iron out because you can see the talent. They don't need to they don't need to take the piss like that. They're wait till you got the levels and then then start you know you know if you want to start talking shit and that because it just it just, it just it doesn't wash with other people. But it's fine. It's absolutely fine if that's what you want to do. But as I say, it's just going to end up coming the copper from. But I just think speed wise and that as well as I think he, he could he could have a bit, just a wee bit too much for his ease possibly at this point. Well, the speed the speed might be a factor, and like the thing is about a guy as a guy like as um, twelve rounds might be different though. Well, a, a guy like Whitaker, it, it's it's tough to kind of judge where their ceiling is at because there are so many like talents and 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 just the the, the raw physical gifts that they have. Um, that, that, that make them very, very difficult to beat. And you just don't know where that might lead them. Like you can obviously look at him and see like, oh, somebody's going to spark this guy at some point in time. I mean, Nas might have not gotten sparked, but that fight with Kevin Kelly, I mean, he was on the floor, what, three, four times in that. Um, so, it, and I, you know, whether Aziz is that guy or not, I don't know. But with, but you just, with Whitaker, it's a real question of, uh, does he want to keep going with the style or does he want to try to refine that to avoid it? And I think you end up in in a point of trouble with like a guy like that. Cause you don't, if you take away the way that they fight, you, you're, you know, they're all instinctive. They're all rhythm. And if you try to get them away from that, you're probably going to do more harm than good. Like, I don't think anything good happened for Naz switching trainers. Uh, he fights how he fights and it's all about if he can find his rhythm and uh, you're just done for. Um, so Miami we'll, sure we'll, couldn't we'll, even change him. Well, yeah, and like, and, and just having those thoughts in his head, I don't think were helpful. You, you just kind of go with your instinct. You're just natural at what you do. So, I, I again, I think Whitaker's probably going to get stopped by someone at some point. But at what level, I'm not quite sure. But he sure is entertaining mm -hmm. while he's doing it. He's got a funky rhythm. The question is, is he more Nassim Hamed or is he more Emmanuel Augustus? We will find out. Uh, Des 
says Matty is bang right. Dan is too slow of hands and feet, and Whitaker is huge. Dan is a small, light heavyweight. The thing is, um, Matty, regarding Whitaker, Azim, and any other prospect, you know, we've seen him as many uh, as we have over the last 20 odd years watching boxing. You have to tick boxes. They look a million dollars on the front foot. And this isn't a slight on them. Whitaker looks class when he's backing people up. He's fighting at his pace. You have to say, what happens when somebody makes him fight at a pace he doesn't like? for eight rounds, for 10 rounds, for 12 rounds. What happens when he gets hit? I'm not just talking about Whitaker, but I'm saying Azim as well. And any of these prospects, we have to tick these boxes first. We see them backing people up. We saw Josh Kelly backing guys up, the infamous seven left hooks in a row. It's okay doing that at a certain level, but you have to tick these boxes as you go along. We haven't seen Whitaker punched by anybody yet. We haven't seen him really backed up by anybody. We haven't seen him make to fight somebody else's fight. He's fighting his fight at the moment. We have to tick those boxes first. You know, Steve, I'm not even sure that I'd try to throw seven left hooks in a row against a fighter who had no right arm. Um, <laughs> just, I, I don't know, not my style. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, Steve. It, it's so tough because the whole thing about this is like you're trying to judge like on on some tangible analysis fighters that are just completely about intangibles. And I think that's, that's the difficulty with it all. And yeah, you might get found out and something like that, but you might not. It, it's just, it's when fighters are all about fighting in a rhythm and they just have the incredible athletic attributes. They're, they're really hard to, to figure out because I mean, they're going to be throwing shots from angles that folks don't expect. And yeah, you might be able to back them up, and some of these guys can't fight off the back foot. You know, we've seen plenty of come forward fighters who, um, you know, as you're pressing, yeah, they can't do much off the back foot. But what's to say a guy like Whitaker can't shift an angle when you've got him going into the corner and then corner you? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't he know. He might well be. Let's find out. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. I, I, I'm not I, saying he can't. Yeah. I just need to see. Yeah. 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 He's just a, he's a really exciting and interesting prospect. And he I think, is. Yeah. And I think the fact that he has so much bravado and you, when you couple it with his style, he's going to have a lot of people who like him and he's going to have a lot of people who hate him. And that's going to drive viewership. You know, people are just as inclined to try to watch if they want to see somebody get knocked out as if they want to see them knock somebody out. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well said, Matty. Chris Butler, just to close, says all his fights have been showcases so far. Number one says, got to give props to Boxer for putting out a half-decent show. Try as he might, even boring Ben Shalom wasn't able to kill that show last night. Uh, Paul Rafter, he said, was a bit disappointed in Aziz, wanted Boazzi to be found out, but it didn't happen. And David Palmer, talking about Whitaker, says it will be fun finding out it well exactly you might get knocked out at some point it's going to be a fun ride along the way and that's what we watch boxing for isn't it well not in our case we watch boxing so we can be miserable and complain every weekend but some of you lot out there might enjoy it anyway a shout out to the chat episode 558 here while that show was going on in Wembley Arena there was another card going on at exactly the same time one of the biggest punchers in British boxing well should I say Andy one of the formerly biggest punchers in British boxing Connor Ben 22 and 0 going in against Peter Dobson 150 and a half pounds they both weighed in at. A few devils, Andy. A few devils out there on the internet were suggesting that Connor's power has dissolved mysteriously. Um, I'm thinking he's just boxing off the bat foot a bit more, just showing us a new look, uh, showing us a few different things, personally. That's what I think. I mean, where's the power gone? What on earth could the matter be? Uh, I think it might be the jet lag, mate, having to fly all that distance to Florida or uh, America, whatever it is, he's wherever he's fighting. Listen to days. John Fisher for the whole 12 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many Chinese with a big man, you know. Um, again, I was fucking between this and you know, the, the Sky event, but um, no great. We'll leave it at that, shall we say. And uh, even, you know, we mentioned it again last week, our man Dobson, very slow, but he was, it, it, there was times he was standing in front of Ben there last night, and Ben's throwing shots at him, and he's not landing anything, or he's, the shots are getting blocked. Um, yeah, the mythical power seems to have you know disappeared, and he's not as explosive anymore. Um, yeah, it's uh, it was it was not a good look again. Uh, again, and of course you, you listen to what's getting said afterwards. You know, they're calling out you know the usual names. They're no, they're no serious about wanting Boots Ennis. I, I seen Da Haney walking up to him as well after calling him out. It will be like a Kell Brook, without doubt, next or something along those lines because they're recouping their losses. You know, if they, they put him in with Boots or you know Devin Haney next, they know what's coming. It's a big fat L and it's another rebuild after all that. And you know, the way his current situation as it is, he cannot afford a rebuild. He's going to try and keep ticking over. 
you know, keep getting you know semi paydays coming in to so we can get a big fish. But he's shit out of luck, mate. If he's if he's not got a a date clear, you know, for that hearing for the I forget what what uh, what state it's at just now in terms of the the appeal for his drug tests and that. But it's he's still still kind of fighting this country. There's no clamour for him actually, to, in my opinion at least. I see you banks now talking about fighting. Who was it? Was it was I forget at this point. I need to check Twitter. Are you chasing Alim Hanalulu last time I heard? No, it was, it was Kel Brook. Sorry, Kel Brook was having an interview with Simon Jordan. That's what it was, oh. and he'd mentioned you, Bank. Sorry. Okay. Um, so you never know. Maybe maybe Brooks no one, and they'd be entertained with that. And he just wanted to fight you, Bank, and you know fight it on Sky. Eddie Eddie's not involved again, but I think it's, it's, it's an odd situation for Ben at this point. He needs to get that UK clearance. Because at this point, nobody's wanting to fight him. You've seen Devin Haney's uh, tweet last night as well. Um, asked, when you asked that question, mate, you know, where's the mysterious power went to? Uh, I think it was Devin Haney anyway. Says yeah, he left, it that was left in the needle, yeah. Left that shit in the needle again, aye. So, uh, yeah, everybody knows what time it is with him now. Um, again, as I say, I just think he's just trying to recoup his losses. I mean, look, he's got a lifestyle, he's got a young family, but he's also had to pay lawyers. He's had to bring in specialists for this stuff, you know, try and, you know, clear them. And he still hasn't got any closer to it, and you don't know what he's earning just now in terms of like well, paydays. But well, I'm did really you bothered. S- did you see what the crowd looked like? No. What crowd? Exactly, Steve. It was, it was you know, like a leisure center or something. It was like it was... COVID again. Little Osama bin Laden cut out. Well, like. <laughs> well, well, I think it was at the Cosmo, but I think they had the room scaled down. Um, I mean, it, I oh, so it was like a casino, like a casino ballroom or something. Yeah, like that. I, I think that maybe maybe a thousand people there. Wow. You know, so you'd be it's lucky five hundred dollars well, for that and, type and of that's, venue. That's the thing about it. Like they can keep, you know, flapping their gums about this, that, and the other about the British Boxing Board of Control. But Connor Ben isn't a sellable commodity in the, in this in this country. So you either have to try winging it and getting him to fight on the East Coast, where it's an easier trip for people from the UK maybe to make it. Or they're going to have to try to face this down and get him to be able to fight on domestic soil because yeah. all this shit that they've endured with him, they're not going to recoup any of it unless they get a really good domestic scrap out of Connor Ben. And nobody wants to fly to to you know Boston or or New York City to see a, uh, to see two Brits fight. You know that that's that's for you guys. Um, so well, not even the Brits want to do that. I don't think there's a, a an appetite to travel with him. His name value in the UK is where he needs to fight. Nigel Ben, Eubank, you know, the Collins, Watson but, era. That's what it's all built of. Nobody's uh, going to travel to watch him. They're, they're putting him in America, Matty, because he can't get a license in the UK. But but here's the good news, Steve, is, yes. is even though there weren't that many people that came over for him, because John Fisher was on the undercard, that meant the Fisher clan was in town. So calling back to when Mayweather and Hatton fought and they were able to drink the MGM out of beer – well, I'm proud to say that the Fishers were able to eat the Excalibur out of their lunch buffet. Um, so you're, you're still producing even with low numbers, Steve. <laughs> oh, dear. MB wasn't impressed. He says, what a terrible card this was. Uh, Connor Ben is the Charlie Zelenoff of professional boxing, says Thomas Newman. Uh, on to Haney, Andy. You know what? As stupid as it is with boxing and all, and Eddie's kind of involved and Haney fought last time on zone. I actually don't think a Haney-Ben fight it's completely unrealistic. Say Haney can't get Romero, as we know. He wanted Ryan Garcia, can't get him. They're talking about Sandor Martin, who really wants to see that. They're talking about Richardson Hitchens, who wants to see him fight him, etc., etc. All of a sudden, you could see Haney going, oh, fight Con, you know. Just in the interim, before you get a big fight, we'll put you in against Conor Ben, decent name, bit of beef, put you on the zone against each other. I don't think it's completely unrealistic, Haney against Ben, from like a stupid boxing standpoint, Andy, to be honest with you. Well, it would need to be a non-title fight, mate, unless Eddie's on the phone to uh, mm, uh, well, the alphabets true. to get him ranked because he's not ranked at this point. And I'm not sure if the WBC situation has him even ranked because he still hasn't been cleared yet. So who knows? So I would think probably that means it was not going to happen. Um, again, I, th- I think Ben's going to end up fighting this trash again and you know, something along these lines until he gets cleared. It's that simple. Um, I don't know when the hearing is... Uh, Again, it was something. Something was upheld, and then I got challenged. So I think it's an appeal or something along these lines. Um, it might even be an arbitration. I, I, I can't mind at this point, but that is what he's going to be facing at this point. And again, if he's calling, you know, the likes of Ennis and uh, Haney, he's, he's he's at it. He's absolutely at it. Kilbrook is what he's at. Chris Eubank is what he's at. 
You know, he was probably at a rematch with Chris Algieri. This time it's personal type of bollocks. That's what he's at. You know, he's not wanting, you know, Stanionis or Crawford or any of these guys, my man. He's fucking at it. And anything else, he's just lip service, just trying to kind of, just cloud chasing. That's all it is. Cloud chasing. Rob's on the call. Welcome, rapping Rob Kelly. One person who Conor Ben won't be facing and nobody will be facing for the foreseeable future, if ever, is the late, great Shakur Stevenson. No retired. I'll tell you what, it was a glorious career. Uh, Rob, what's your standout Shakur moment? Um, Slapping that bitch in the garage. <laughs> it was up there. I know, look, Shakur's a great fighter, man. I think he's just frustrated, isn't he? Um, like us all. <laughs> he's showing Was it the vacant featherweight title he won, Rob? Is that it? Or was it the interim super featherweight title? Um, you probably have to or go was back it the to vacant the super featherweight title? <laughs> Or the vacant lightweight type. Who are we doing? What are we doing? Tony Bellew's career? What's going on here? <laughs> so, you know, kind of touching on what else is going on this last week. Why does this picture of Shakur look like Carl Weathers' up to no good brother? What's going on? <laughs> there is no tomorrow. <laughs> Not for Shakur, Rob. He's retired. He's retired, yeah. Retired, Rob Kelly. I don't know, man. Um, I'm sure Shakur will be back. Something tells me this is not a genuine retirement. Ooh, it's like, I don't know. It's like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fucking fly! How many times has Floyd retired? Well, in I was, his I was gonna, career? I was gonna say, do you think it's one of those extended retirements where they might be able to build up and cycle some shit through? Because well, you're off, I, you're I, off, I, you're, I, you're I, off the test. He's got alimony payments to keep, mate. He's got babies now, so he's got to any look out for them. cynical guys would have thought that that's what Mayweather was at after he retired for a year after Marquez, wasn't it? And then came back, but anyway, um, no, Shakur Stevenson. I'm sure we'd see him out again, hopefully against a live body or somebody with a pulse, because he is a really good fighter. I mean, I think he's getting a lot of. Re- Boxing, we're really fickle, aren't we? And there's loads of reasons, reasons he buys in boxing. We just because he stank out the place the last time, he'd done well up to that. Like, hadn't he been beaten, like, undefeated? Most of the guys he'd been beaten on the way up or undefeated, as far as I know, in the last previous uh, three or four fights to that. So he's a really good fighter. It's just not that he's in the Who Wants Him club. Nobody wants to fight him. He can't draw flies. And. Yeah, he's not particularly exciting outside of Twitter. So, um, but I do think on his day, against the best guys he's in the argument for sure and probably the favorite against most of them but what the fuck do i know connor ben one of those best guys <laughs> uh, i can't see you put connor ben and favorite in anything other than like i, I think he's ha- hands down the most dislikable guy in the sport i you really believe that like he is such do you know what his behavior in the press conference last night when they were like hey he said you left some shit in the news like what the fuck is his problem? Fucking ain't he? You want to fucking come over here? I'll give him the power. Oh, <laughs> oh fucking, fucking Errol Spence. I'll take you right away, you fucking wanker. You're behaving. Lloyd like, Rage. <laughs> beha- yeah, we're behaving like exactly. Well, it could be a combination of two things, but he's behaving ex- exactly like what he fucking is. A spoiled child. A fucking yeah. spoiled brat who was born with a fucking silver spoon in his mouth and is, is one of the most entitled fighters on the planet who's beaten nobody with a fucking pulse. Um has beat nobody. His record is a fucking, is shocking. And now he's had two knockover jobs against fellas he was supposed to knock over and he couldn't knock him over. And now Errol Spence is a wanker because of that. And so is Devin Haney. <laughs> and like, Devin Haney's da who cannot stay out of the fucking public eye, man. He's like fucking, what you call it? Like Shug said about Puff all up in the videos. Like, isn't he going around with his son in the tracksuit, 54 <laughs> years of age, showing up at everything. He had to fucking go and put himself in the mix. He's doing his job promoting his son and Eddie must have been thanking the fucking, his lucky stars. He's like, thank fuck Bill Haney showed up at this press conference because now we can float another mythical fight for Conor Ben that's never going to happen. Steve, I hear you. You're saying that might, might be a bad fight for welterweight. Do you think Eddie's going to put Conor Ben in with Devin Haney? He's fucking no chance of beating Devin Haney. No chance. Devin Haney had jabbed, jabbed the fucking head on. Pistol Pete nearly fucking... Pistol Pete... If Pistol Pete had found some belief and got out of sparring partner mode, he could have won the fucking fight. Jesus Christ. And he's fighting on it. He probably fucking... He probably just after breakfast as well. At the time it was on. Wasn't a good time for Pistol Pete. And let his wheel big settle. Fuck's sake. This, they're trying to... Sell. Like, Eddie's a great salesman, right? He's one of the best in the biz for selling you... Dressing up fucking shit and selling it to you, but he can't do it with him. Like he has him over in America because he can't get a license in the UK. Fighting at lunchtime against fellas on a four-year hiatus that he can't knock out suspiciously. And maybe it's the ring rust. And then Eddie was making excuses for him afterwards in the ring. You know, it's uh you know, maybe when he can fight with a free mind, that's when you see the real Connor Ben. It's mentally tough for him just now, Rob. It's mentally tough for him. That's why he can't knock anybody out. Everybody get off his case. You already said on Pierce Morgan, Morgan and Ariel Hawani and anybody else who shoved a microphone under his face. 
Um, this guy's an embarrassment, man. He's going around ca- calling out retired fighters. The only time he talks about fucking real life fighters is when he's on Twitter. Because I guarantee, if Boots Ennis had been in that venue last night, he wouldn't have said nothing. He wouldn't have said nothing or, against Terence Crawford or a real fighter. But he wants to pick on Chris Eubank Jr. and call him up and, and drag him down from for a, a fucking as as Chris Eubank Senior said, he, he walks around at one hundred and eighty five pounds. You want to drag him down to one sixty for a fight? that nobody wanted to see in the first place. Then when that can't happen, he goes chasing fucking Kell Brook. Like, no retired fucking 47-pounder is safe. Fucking watch out, Mark Breland. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's just, yeah, he's, and just, it's just a bit, like, I wouldn't mind if he got in and he got on with it and he just came out and was like, yeah, yeah, we're fucking looking for big fights, blah, blah, blah. But that's the way he goes on. Like, he's, he's, he's the least convincing tough guy in the sport. The least convincing fucking hard man in the sport. He backs too much. And, Looking at his performance, any ranked welterweight is splatter him. They're talking about Barrios, like the last. I think Barrios beat him. I think any of the fringe welterweights would re- he'd really, really have trouble with him because he's not that good, and he hasn't, you know, he hasn't really tested himself. He's been on the fucking. Uh, he's had a burst of strength <laughs> out of somewhere. Now that burst of strength has disappeared, and he really looks like a novice fighter. He looks bang average, bang, bang average, and nothing, none of those big shots last night were having a dent in good old pistol piece. Um, so, I don't think the Americans will be jumping out. The Americans, American Twitter last night was flaming Conor Ben, flaming him up. They're not in a hurry to see him again, Mac. Um, so, I don't think he's going to be a draw over there. Eddie needs to get that license situation resolved ASAP and try to bring him back to the UK so he can make some bread out of him yes. or get him over to Saudi. Exactly. Because I agree, I agree with the, he's not going to draw flies over there. No, he has no star no. Power, power, and they're actually laughing at him. It's damaging his brand, having him fighting on the buffet. Um, and, and you put Devin Haney trolling you on Twitter, saying he's literally yeah. shit in the needle, you know. So and then and then he's like, oh well, what's Devin Haney talking about power? He never had power. Yeah, well that's the point. Devin Haney's had no power, and he's still a world champion. That's showing you how good he is. It's not fucking. Do you know what I mean? If he gets a sudden burst of power over the next three fights, everybody will be wondering where the fuck did Devin Haney get this power out of? You get me, like so. Yeah, anyway, but at least, at least at least Haney's got the kind of the, the ultimate excuse that he actually, you know, the weight drain didn't make him thirty five compared to one forty. We mentioned it after his last fight. Ben has nothing wasn't... for Haney. He just has to say what comes into his head, doesn't he? Yeah. Haney would jab his head off. Haney would beat beat the shit out of fucking Conor Ben. Beat the well, living shit out of him. Whether he can punch a... or not. Well, this fight was at a catch weight of one hundred and fifty pounds as well, and I like. I don't even really see Ben as a welterweight. Don't you guys no, just agree. look at him and think he's like... He's, he's a light welterweight. He's, 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 he's a 140 fighter. Yeah. yeah and, so I mean, to, to be fair to him, he does have some decent quality. He is He's very fast of hands. He's got decent foot speed. He's clearly athletic. Um, yeah, yeah that's fantastic that's tattoos. tattoo work. Uh, you know, it's a nice shame fake beard. He spent his yeah. ear earnings on all that work, but... Um, you know, um, there, there, there are things that you can look at him and say, yeah, those are attributes you might look in for a fighter, but it's not all there. He's just, he's not a complete package. I don't think he if ever his will name, be. If his name wasn't Ben, we'd have never heard of him. You could be right. We'd have never heard of him. A fellow with his ability would have never forgotten. His name was Connor anyway. Bean. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey guys, again, you know, <laughs> you know Eddie, Eddie saying Ricky Hatton's son and, you know, it's it's like you hear it you hear it all the time uh, with football players and stuff, especially in the UK. I mean, there's Duncan Ferguson, right? He's come up here, manager in Inverness, and he's brought his son up. The managed to get him a loan deal, uh, uh, you know, at four for. I believe Wayne Rooney's son's been signed up by by some club. So uh, clearly, some clubs mm-hmm. are taking a punt, hoping you know they're going to have the pedigree here. You know, it never always deal works out. Paul Dalglish. <laughs> Yeah, Paul Douglas. Paul Douglas. My cousin was in things with him. <laughs> he was in things with him when he was at Celtic. And the man that was in the things we were talking about him, he's like, I had him down the park. He couldn't get the fucking ball up. He's like, he got fucking two clubs. He couldn't get the fucking ball up down the park. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. and his dad played on the same baseball team before his old man retired. And LeBron James is trying to stay in the league long enough to play with his son. There so you, you never know. Maybe we will see a father and son fight someday. Yeah, well, we have before, haven't we? Harry Duven Jr. against Harry Duven Sr. in 2006, heavyweight extravaganza. I've seen, <laughs> <all of them laughs> really? I seen a ton of them in Wexford, none of them on fucking pay per view. It doesn't count if the cops are called, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Palmer says Ennis versus Ben is my most wanted fight of the year. Uh, Matty, uh, Rob mentioned the Americans there, and you're definitely in my top 15 of respected American contributors. So I'm going to go to you here. <laughs> On, on this next fucking number, what's that? 
15. <laughs> on this next one. So, Connor Ben, tell me how the fights go on in your perspective. Connor Ben against Chris Eubank Jr., if they manage to make it again. Obviously, weight permitting. How do you think that one would end up? You know, the first time around, I thought that Eubank was going to have a hard time squeezing down and he was going to look a little shit. And I thought that Ben was going to fucking knock him out. And also because I thought Ben was on steroids. And then everyone found that out and kind of fucked that fight for me. Um, now that I think that Eubank Jr. has found a comfortable way to get down to the weight. And I think if, you know, depending on um, his status as far as, um, you know, wanting to come tra- over here and train. I, I think being in the gym um, with Bomac worked out really well for him. And I just personally think now I, it's an exact reverse of how I thought the fight would go the first time. I think, you know, Eubank is comfortable at the weight. Uh, ben is off the steroids. And uh, I, I think that uh, Eubank would probably just pummel him at this point. Ben's off the steroids because he was never on the steroids. What about Ben against Kel Brook, recently retired, <laughs> Matty? I actually think Special K takes him apart. It kind of like, I think he'll have one more uh, signature win, kind of like the way that uh, uh, Freitas had when he came back and beat the snot of, out of Elevera, like three weight classes, four weight classes above where he competed. Um, I, I honestly think that could happen. What about Khan against uh, one-eyed Long John Errol Spence? Con or Connor Ben against Spence? Oh, oh, okay. I'm like, like that's just mean. But yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's also mean. Not as mean, but that's still mean, Steve. I would. I don't know that Connor deserves quite that much. Let me just say, probably going to call for him next. Well, <laughs> I hadn't got him on my list, but I should maybe add him. But... Let me just say, in a sport where there's like. You know, like there's so many people you can hate, you know, there's like rapists and domestic abusers and shit like Ooh. that. The fact that people just roundly say, eh, mm-hmm. no, Connor Ben's the worst fucking asshole them well. of them all. Um, <laughs> yeah, it speaks volumes of that asshole, really. But uh, continue. Any more? Uh, 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 yes, I've got two more for you because everyone's loving this, I'm sure. Uh, Jerron Ennis against uh, Connor Ben. You might as well have the ambulance outside. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so what about the ring? Let him fucking the ambulance punch him in it. <laughs> WWE still. Tell you what, if they put that on their zone pay per view, I'm buying that one, baby. <laughs> you just instead of having a boxing match, they might as well turn it into kind of like how they had like the casket matches in WWE, but have an ambulance <laughs> match, and the first one to throw the guy in the back, the ambulance wins. That's oh, far yeah. more entertaining than Ennis against bon- Ben in a boxing ring. Am I right or am I right? Ben better be careful, by the way, of calling for fucking Haney because hey, Haney's big, big time friends with His Excellency, isn't he? So if His Excellency says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So be careful what you wish for. Ooh, we all know go. who pulls the strings. Uh, right, final one. Connor Ben against Mario Barrios. Barrios uh, has that really exceptional height and length advantage. And in his last fight against Ugas, he really showed that he's learning how to snap that jab and uh, catch guys when they're coming in right at the threshold. So I would have to think that Barrios and his jab wins the day. You mentioned Ugas there, actually. He looked terrible in his last fight. Couldn't get off. Timing was all over the place. I got completely busted up. Looked like he should retire. What about Connor been against Ugas? Sounds like something that should make. That's a great guy for him to pick on. There you go, Matty has spoken. Going through See, we'll take it, you guys are right as well. <laughs> you could borrow one off Errol. <laughs> like okay. I said, awareness from the guy is unbelievable. Said to Josh Kelly, yeah, go fucking fight in a, le- go fight in a leisure centre. You're not relevant. You're fighting at fucking half seven in the morning in Vegas. Fellas are still up coming to see your fights. Fuck off, man. With all the oxygen that's been pumped in to keep the crowd awake. <laughs> <laughs> you think he would have been all right? He had two noses. <laughs> 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 oh dear Chris Butler says you guys would beat Ben right we spent far too much time on Ben already Andy what about the undercard my god <laughs> oh, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can help I can help you right now mate I ain't seen shit of that <laughs> Big John Big John got a win didn't he Big John uh, young Big John Oh, and, and another, another news, Austin Trout became bare knuckle, heavy, uh, bare knuckle world middleweight champion during the Ooh, weekend I'm going to have to watch that Austin Trout. Have to watch that when it doesn't, yeah. so so no, no, there's no great shocks here. I've 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 been, I've always been fond of Trout, and especially when I one of my great underdog picks of all time was him against Cotto. I I'm pretty keen on the guy. Fish based theme, isn't it? Johnny Fisher, Austin Trout. I need to get Jamel Herring in there. <laughs> nice, Steve. It's a- that's nice, Steve. Maybe we can Steve. get them all to box underwater and see who has the most oxygen. <laughs> oh, I would definitely, mate. That'd be the next thing. <laughs> and, and everyone has to wear salmon-colored trunks. 
Oh, yeah. so, that, uh, on, that undercard, I mean, I'm trying to think. The Ammo Williams, he had a really good knockout on there. Yeah, right? he looked I, decent, I thought, yeah. Yeah, the thing about Ammo, like uh, people were, you know, kind of shitting on him in the Nutters group, but I, I kind of think he fought how he felt he needed to fight and he kind of did what he needed to do and ended it when he felt like he wanted to. Um, he's a, he's a, he is a talented fighter. I'd like to definitely see him in a step up, but you can just tell that he's, he's really a physical specimen and he's super strong. He's got kind of that Bruce Lee, Manny Pacquiao cut to him. And, and when he knocked that cat out, you know, like, like he knocked him back like 10 feet. That was the, he's a very, very strong man. He is. Cool look. I saw the other card if you want to. Yeah, go on, go ahead. Sure. I saw because I didn't know. You watched then... Connor Ben on a Saturday night, Rob. No, no, I switched over to Connor Ben momentarily, and then I sw- I said he's dog shit to the lads in the chat. Any top welterweight is going to splatter him, and I went back over to the domestic thriller that was <laughs> Buatzi versus Dan Aziz. I watched that mm-hmm. card. Like, um, I thought who was on that Adam Azim. I thought he was good. Um, thought he was boxing well, warming up into it. The guy. Puts his shoulder out, obviously, and fucking, do you know what I mean? You have a bit of an anti-climax, but I think he's a good fighter. But look very sharp. Um, Whitaker, <laughs> Whitaker on the undercard. I'm sure you've got, you've all said like, what the fucking, what is the most obvious thing? I think he's actually added a little bit, um, where he feels like he's one of those young fighters. He's kind of come up in the social media era, and maybe we just don't understand it. But he's being a prick to kind of do the Jake Paul route, I think, a little bit, and. You know the fucking dancing and all that. Like it's not. Well, we've spoke about it a million times. Like it's not impressive against sparring partner level guys. Like let's see if we can do it as he as he moves up. Have they got rid of Sugar Hill with Ben Whitaker? I don't know. Unless he was out with Fury, I suppose. Oh yeah, probably out with Fury. That yeah, but I don't know. I just he seems like a, he's another unlikable guy. Like, but maybe he's got everybody tuning in. He's Ben Shalom's only hope of a real star over there. I think because Buatzi and Aziz. As much as the commentators hyped it, I just thought the quality was very poor. I thought Aziz especially looked like a club fighter. Um, he gave his all, but he looked tentative. He looked tired, and he looked like he'd blown a gasket by round nine came. And Buddy McGirt was shouting at him to move forward for the last three rounds and start, start going for it, letting his hands go. But I felt like he was afraid to let his hands go because he knew what was coming if he opened up because he was too tired. And then when he was forced into it, he was getting knocked over. And I actually think Buatzi... Uh, showed him a bit of sympathy in the twelfth round because he could have finished him. Um, he backed up to the to the ropes with about ten seconds to go with his hands down, and he was looking at Buatzi like fucking. And Buatzi just took a step back and he let him finish the fight. I, I believe, like I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's I, not I true. I agree. I agree. But I feel like he, he let him finish finish on his feet uh, because the two of them are mates. But that says a lot to me about Buatzi as well because Batarbiev is not letting anybody finish that fight. Oh yeah, is not letting anybody finish that fight. Or even Bivol. Well, Bivol probably let him finish the fight, but you think, you know, just with the, with the quality that's above him, the Anthony Yard fight's the only fight to make. I'd probably favour Yard in that fight if things go tough uh, because he's been through it against higher calibre of opponents. But Watsi's kind of not where he should be based on the talent he's supposed to have had from amateur turning over. Like, I think it was you, Steve, said on Twitter, like, it's the, probably the most Buatsi thing to do now would be to pull out of any uh, world eliminators come back and have a rematch with Aziz in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> um, couldn't, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't bet against that at all. Like, um, but I just thought, like, it was a poor fight. I didn't think it was, I thought Boatsy was well ahead. I didn't think it was close by any stretch. I agree. Uh, George Groves is doing his best to sell it as a potential draw if, if Aziz hasn't got dropped three times, it would have been a draw. So I couldn't see that. Like, but yeah, poor fight. Like, poor, and Ben Shalom is doing his best. God help him over on Sky to try and hype these things up and make big stars for himself. But the closest I think he has to that is Whitaker. And I think we know that's a ticking time bomb. But I do think Whitaker has potential to put asses in seats domestically at least as he as he moves on. Like, but that's not saying I rate him or whatever. I have to see him against a live body, you know, that way. But fucking Buatzi as he's poor for what it was I thought poor for 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 the the type of fight it was big rivalry sold out crowd and I just thought Aziz was a level bo- below Boatzi whatever that says I don't know but Boatzi I had next for me Boatzi you next wouldn't mind seeing that thank you very much for that summation wrapping Rob Kelly just to remind everybody at home you're listening to episode 558 of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast Rob's there giving us his summation Matty's here as well Andy and me, Steve, before we go on to talk about the, the big cut 
of the week. Usyk against Fury has been postponed. Let's have a look through the chat, see who's hanging around. We've got Harvey Price boxing returns. Des is there as well. So is Johnny. Mark Stanton's with us as well. Number one, Michael Thompson is here. MB, shout out to him. Steve Bald on top, Wellings. That's not me, but I'm bald all over, actually, to be honest with you. A bit of a disclaimer there. Chris Butler's here. Uh, Harvey Brown, the juice. Who else have we got floating about there? Yimmy Yappy's here with us. So is Thomas Newman. Just scrolling on up to see David Palmer, who's thrown the soul super chat in for the evening. Uh, number one is with us. Good evening to you as well. Who else have we got here? Mark Stanton. I think I already mentioned him. Might as well do it twice. Jim McDonald boxing. It could be the fake one. They're saying in the chat. Who knows? Ray's here. Josh Ford's there as well. Uh, scrolling on up. Who else have we got? Any other names that we haven't mentioned? Boxing Asylum. That's us. Uh, Beat Bot Boop is here. Big up the fury, he says. Uh, David Mustard says, hi, lads. Hello to you as well, David. I'll put you on the screen there just to give you a shout out. Right. Let's move on to the big talking point of the week. Well, there it is, Andy. For all to see, a lot of people, a lot of cynics, the same scumbags probably who were casting aspersions on Conor Ben were saying that Fury wouldn't go ahead with this fight. He's not in shape. Look at Nganu, his mental state's all over the place. And then lo and behold, a couple of weeks out from fighting Usyk on February the 17th, I believe the date was, this gash, this absolute gash at the top of his eye appears from a sparring session with an unknown assailant. What were your initial thoughts, uh, Andy, when this news filtered through to you? Fuck. That was exactly what I thought. Fuck, but no surprise. You know, no. you expect these things in boxing. You expect something to kind of come up, you know, throwing the wrenches. But what I would say is uh, a couple of things. Obviously, people are going mental. I was having a bit of a joke in that as well. Just because you, you, you've heard it all before with Fury and that. I'll fight this guy with a hand behind my back and, you know, I'll fight him where he was apparently mentioned he was going to go ahead with the fight. Um, but at the same time, as he, he's, there's, there's mentalists out there. Right? Like, you know, they're, they're actually looking at his phone, trying to just prove that you know this cut isn't real and all this type of stuff. I, I believe the cut to be real. I just don't believe it happened in the last few days. And I also mm. believe, I also believe, in my opinion, that video that shows the the, the, the elbow hitting Fury, I believe that to be Jay Opatia. Well, there has been uh, comments about Opatoya being sent home and all. and Well, know, so we, yeah. there is that. And obviously there's been comments on Twitter as well that it's, it was like some sort of Croatian heavyweight. But again, it's, uh, that I'm not the only one with that opinion, obviously, that this Opatoya has possibly done it. Opatoya apparently left Cameron about the 22nd of January, I think it was. So that would that would basically lay claim to the fact is that it's happened in the last couple of weeks. Fury's probably had the work done, and then it's just no really repairing quick enough. So they've had to go for the extension for the or the postponement. I don't know. But I wouldn't put it past him, a Croatian lad, to elbow him and open up a cut because I was over there in Croatia in the summer, and a lot of them are very rude. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I wouldn't put it past him to drop the elbow. No, seriously, I think even from that clip, looked like he's struggling a small bit with the smaller guy inspiring now I know you can't tell much from a fucking point five second clip but I think it's more telling that Apatia was sent home from camp wasn't it like so I don't know maybe he needs more time well, there'd be rumours that apparently that Apatia put him on his arse apparently I mean anything is possible I don't I think the fury we saw against Inganu um it was it was it looked uh, even though they said he was in camp and he took it all seriously and that looked like he wasn't the same version of himself. And I was speculating at the time, was it because of the three fights with Wilder that he just doesn't look the same anymore? Or could he could not pull the trigger? Or what's going on? Or maybe there's a bit of self-doubt. But he was straight out of the Usyk fight after the Ngannou fight over a cut as well, wasn't it? Well, see that cut, mate? I'm, sh- I'm pretty certain that's the scar tissue from the Wallen fight that's opened up there. Oh, I'm sure, two cut- yeah. yeah. two cuts in that fight. And that that one there looks like it was the one that was, that was in the same spot. Well, well, that was a above. desperate cut. That was a desperate cut. Never fairness against I Wally. Am. That was one of the only nights he looked bad or looked like in trouble about from Engano since he's kind of re- since he won a world heavyweight title. Like that's one of the only nights he's had a bad night, like or look bad. Um, in the Wilder fight, you can understand the, the the moments he's under fire, but other than that, he's cruised it. So I don't know. I'm just extremely disappointed. I was really looking forward to this. It, the more it kind of had been sl- it it had been sleeping and creeping since it had been postponed the first time. An extra layer of intrigue is added into it based off of Fury's performance against Ngannou. Has to be. You know, you have to have those question marks going into it. But, like, 
I just wanted to see it. I just wanted to see that clash of styles. Like I wanted to see that event. And now the fucking fact that we have to wait for it in May. And God knows what happens between now and May. Like could something happen to Usyk to push it back even further? Who knows? Like well, the Ngannou fight is what made the Usyk uh, fight delayed in the first place because he got a fucking cut then too. Yeah, exactly. But it had been, we, you know, we'd been kind of we put it to one side. We'd forgotten about it, and then all of a sudden it was almost here. And now it's like, oh fuck this! Like to wait again for the heavyweights. I, just, I don't put any stock in the heavyweight boxing scene at all in the last five years. It's like you just you move a mountain before you get the two best guys in the ring. Like. I think as well, Matty. Sometimes people say, "Oh, um, it's going to add to the intrigue and build it up a bit more and everything." But to me, it, I don't know. It feels like a, a letdown. And it just feels as if we're that step further away from it actually happening for some reason with Fury, given his past, for whatever reasons you want to attribute that to. It just feels like you have to get him in the ring. And then I know they're saying May the 18th, it will happen. It's the two best fighters in the world. How could it not? The money's there in Saudi Arabia. Until you get him in the ring, you can't guarantee anything. And I think this is a blow. And it, it pushes it further away and makes it less likely to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, you know... Steve, I think the the fight will happen, and the only reason I say that is I think the money, <coughs> excuse me, is just too big for Fury to not want one more, and then he could just walk away. I know some people think, oh, he's done. It's never going to happen. The money's just too big. I, I think he can take his L, walk away, and, you know, I mean, you're pocketing. God, he'll probably end up pocketing, you know, over $10 million in taxes and everything, thinking about it. But, um so we will get this, but I'm beginning to have more and more doubts about how much of Tyson Fury is left, how much the Wilder fights took out of him. Um, I, I he, He's obviously struggling. You know, I, I know he turned himself around in so many ways, but he, uh, he didn't live the life. So I don't know. It, it'll be very interesting to see uh, when this fight comes off how they look and you know i mean and the one thing that you you also have to consider is Usyk's not a, a young man either um but he does sure seem to be um keeping up his fitness and and he's still quite athletic but i i'm far more doubtful about a fury victory uh now than i was a week ago andy what's going on with cutgate because we saw the photo of fury let me just bring it back up again um there Chris was saying about it being the other eye. That's the eye in the wall in fight there. But then somebody else, in, somebody else in the comments, though, Andy, is saying, Rick Top is saying it's the other eye, so the pick and vid must be reversed. It's no. It's, if you look at, well, unless the, the sparring video is also reversed because it's clearly a left elbow that catches him. So unless the, the, the elbows came right across his face and somehow cut him on the other eye, directly across the other side of his face, it's, it's the same eye, I'm pretty certain. It's the eye of the Illuminati, Andy. I think that's what that's yeah, all seeing this, mate. eye, mate. It's the all seeing eye. <laughs> Wait, till Connor Ben finds there's another eye up for grabs. <laughs> Bloody hell. So, Rob, May the 18th, they're talking about now. Fury, I don't know, can he keep it together? Can he hold it together? Is he going to be a couple of retirements before then, as one of the boys said in the chat? Probably. I, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I. At this stage, it's just kind of just the heavy way to just wait and see what happens. Like, I, I still wouldn't bet against him to beat Usyk. I still think he's the favourite to beat Usyk. A, a sharp Tyson Fury. Um, I think we'll just find a way. I think it's just too, the size difference is too big. And Fury can do a lot of things that Usyk's other opponents at heavyweight are not able to do. Um, you can switch the southpaw with him. He can move. He can box on his feet. He can really put pressure on you on the inside by weighing on you, grabbing on your neck. And I think when he pushed... If the moments that that Joshua had Usyk on when he was pushing him back to the ropes and he couldn't pull the trigger, I think Fury would be clever enough to kind of take a step back and land a one-two in those spots and just keep him on the ropes and break him down. Do you get me? So I think Fury still has the edge when the fight happens, but let's talk about it in May. Fuck me. we got it the summertime now to wait for it, so we'll have to see. Just on the heavyweight theme, Andy, uh, moving away from Fury Usyk, last, last night, boring Ben Shalom brought two heavyweights into the ring, Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley. They were supposed to fight before for the British title. I think it was Clark who was withdrawn. People said he didn't fancy it. He has the big esteemed amateur pedigree. Wardley sort of come from the streets, but he's shown his mettle, shown his worth. Are you excited by this fight, Andy? I, I think it's definitely one that needed to happen on the domestic front. Fraser Clark against Fabio Wardley. So I was chatting away there. So I was on mute. This is yeah. the one that got postponed after the the way or the, the what happened again. No, um, 
Adela- oh, is it Adelaide Wardley you're thinking about whenever they had the oh, right. on the red that carpet? Was... Before it was supposed to take place, and then Clark with- was withdrawn. Boy and Ben Shalom came on and says, we're- he's going to the top, he's going to win all the world titles, we've- we're taking him a different route and all this. But now apparently he is worthy of fighting Wardley. Yeah, well, it's a good domestic scrap, I suppose. I think so, point. yeah. You know, and it's probably it's, well, it's ideal for both of me. But as Clark, he's early thirties now, isn't he? And Wardley must be in his thirties now as well at this point. So, ideal for both guys. Really, is ideal for both guys at this point. Any belts in the line? It's a British uh, title, eh? Yeah, British and Commonwealth. Wardley's got, hasn't he? he? Brought them into the ring with him last night. Aye, so uh, yeah, it's a bit, a bit of beef. You know, can't go wrong with that. You know, we're just big phrase is thirty-two, Andy, and Wardley oh, is, is. Let me see. He is. Boom, ba, da, boom, boom, boom. Uh, box it won't load. Don't know how old Wardley is then. <laughs> uh, Wardley's a early, early, late 29. Early 29. It's a good one for me because I'm finally going to be able to tell which one is which out of these two fucking. They are very similar. Yeah, I, I think Wardley's going to beat him, Andy, to be honest. You think so? I think so, yeah. I don't know, mate. I think... Uh... Clark's fought some naff, hasn't he? Wardley's sort of... Everyone they've put in front of him, who, who is supposed to give him a test, he's kind of got through them. I think Wardley might outlast him, actually, as the fight goes down the stretch. Mm, interesting. Um, I, I think maybe just, just with Clark, maybe with his amateur back then, it might, might be enough. But who knows? It's heavyweights at the end of the day. just takes one. Um, yeah, this, is, this, this will be good stuff, hopefully. Um, just checking the card here. No other details on the card, obviously, but... You know, praise be to Ben Shalom, he'll get that fixed out. We always see Esther's help there, mate, no problem at all. They'll get it over the line. Uh, Wednesday, Matty, I know you're a big fan of the, the Pro Box card. You didn't manage to see Angelo Leo against Mike Big Clark, freeze. Yeah. <laughs> the, big, the big freeze, exactly. Um, Leo landed a cracking body shot. Planier went down. The referee said it was low. Planier was there holding his ribs, saying they were broken and he couldn't breathe. The referee was still saying it low. I don't think there was video replays or anything like that. But somebody at ringside said, here, hang on, that's a cracking body shot, man. You may count him out. And the next thing, uh, the fight was over. Uh, the undercard as well was decent. Du- Romero Duno got knocked out by Antonio Moran. And Christopher Pearson fought Trevor McCombie, who came out really fast at the blocks. And he managed to maintain the pace as well. Good pro box card, this, Maddie. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, I you see, if you look at McCombie's box rec, he adds like some huge gaps in time in his resume. <clears throat> so it's kind of curious, a guy with an undefeated record that old, um, still working his way up. But um, he, a decent pressure fighter. I don't think he's going to be a championship fighter, but I, I could definitely see him working his way up still a little bit more um, uh, as as he goes up the ladder. I, I thought that that was a, it looked like a fairly decent test for a guy who on paper was uh, untested and, and he came through it against Pearson um, quite well. And the, uh, the main of uh, the sec the next fight, what was that Dino versus uh, who was the guy who got the W Antonio Moran. Yeah. Mor- and Moran had, uh, is, has a pretty decent resume. I, I think he, uh, he fought Jermaine, Jermaine Ortiz. I think he might've rattled him a couple of times. If I recall. Yeah, he did. Um, fought Haney but- as well, didn't they? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and so this is a couple of guys who had, uh, lost to some decent names going at it. And, and Moran was, was just the bigger fighter, the sharper fighter. Um, and what was still a fairly entertaining fight, you know, it wasn't for lack of uh, trying on Dinu's part. Uh, but Moran was, uh, just, uh, just able to, uh, impose himself more or less and, and ended up taking, taking him out. Um, uh, when it looked like Dinu might be able to eat his best shots, um, I, I think it might have been a, a left hook against the ropes. Dino tried to claim he slipped. It was a, it was pretty funny. But uh, yeah, another quality uh, card from uh, Pro Box. And again, the, the the kind of fighters and the kind of fights that you want to see. Some guys needing a second chance. Some guys on the come up who who haven't gotten a look by the uh, big promoters. And uh, the next uh, card we're going to see is going to be. Um, uh, a week from Friday instead of Wednesday because of Valentine's Day. They're not going right. to try to make a, make us choose between boxing and the women in our lives. So uh, that's a very nice of them. They value our, our health, apparently. Um, so uh, another reason to tip your hat to Pro Box. Yeah, Pro Box do a good job of sort of getting former, well, I suppose Leo's a former champion technically, but former contenders, guys on the way up, on the way down, and, and matching them up against each other really well. So... Fair play to Pro Box. Matty mentioned Jermaine Ortiz there. We'll be talking about Ortiz against Tiafimo Lopez shortly. And also we have a question in from Ryan Deal. Just quickly, Matty, I know you're a fan of this guy. The last time 
You're going to see Jimmy first, 42 years young. Jimmy, the final dance, was fighting on February, on uh, Saturday evening, an evening of professional boxing. Uh, Jacob Quinn, Dan Garber and Jake Turner were there as well. The final dance there, Rob, for Jimmy. The marketing department wants second here. Like, his name is Jimmy first and they couldn't call it the last dance. <laughs> Fuck's sake, the final <laughs> dance. Fucking hell. He did well, though, didn't he, Matty? Old Jimmy coming to the fore. He got that shot on the zone, I think, and he won. And then he, he lost in his first defense. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, he fought uh, and he lost to the same guy. I, I think that he, that he, uh, that, that he put that he won the title fight. What was that? And the guy he kept losing his mouthpiece and it had, kept having points deducted. What the hell was that cat's? I think it was Corey something or other. Kobe or Corey something. That's right. Yeah, right? yeah, in he Bradford came, it was. Yeah, uh, Jimmy King. Code Hotel Bradford. I stayed Jimmy. a lot of times at the Bradford Hilton, not the Bangkok Hilton, <laughs> but not this similar. I'd say, you know that way. <laughs> but, uh, it's a great pub actually in Bradford called the Ginger Goose. You want to go in there, rock in there some Tuesday night, right spot. <laughs> if it, yep. Yeah. If, it, if anybody knows where to find the Lady Boys across the world, uh, <laughs> it's definitely Rob Kelly. The Bradford Lady Boys. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said it was like Bangkok, right? So, uh, <laughs> I thought that's what you were going for. I, I don't he know. Was. He uh, won anyway. It was against the journeyman. And yes. it says on Boxwick as well, uh, Jimmy first final fight. So it even notes that yeah. for him. And it's cool because I mean, I think he was forty-one years old when when he when he picked up that area title. So I mean, good for good for the dude. I think one of the Bens in the group, I can't remember which one, is actually uh, <laughs> is uh, uh, knows him, likes him, uh, really enjoyed watching his his short career uh, that he uh, decided to get into later in life. So hey, rock on, Jimmy! First, uh, we hope uh, you enjoy whatever uh, is next around the bend. Yeah, now we like them good stories. Good for him, man. Good for him. Yeah. He got a few quids night out in Bradford. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well done. Right, we'll throw this open to anybody who wants to answer it. Uh, I don't know if you have any interest in this one, Rob. Ryan Deal says, question for the pod on a quiet week. Not suggesting Conor Ben headline in Vegas isn't worth three hours. What <laughs> fights in the modern area uh, that a guy lost over 12 rounds that you think would have gone, got the win if it was 15 rounds? So he's mm. talking Chavez, Junior against Sergio. Good one. Joe Parker, Dillian White was the one that came to my mind, actually. A couple off the top of my head. Clotty against Cotto. Good one. Mm, that guy yes. seemed to be gassed in that 140 stretch for a while. Like. Definitely yes. Travis. Seen Here's it. one for you. Hagler versus oh. Leonard. Yeah. yeah. Good call. Yeah, there's a reason that, that uh, Leonard insisted it was 12, isn't there? Um, I uh, Zab Judah against Lucas Matisse. Zab against Lucas. When was that? I don't remember that fight, Matty. That was, yeah, was in, that? that was in 2008 after Zab kind of out of nowhere lifted the title off of Kaiser Mabuza, who out of nowhere lifted it off of Kendall Holt. I've got one. Who was the guy that had Lucas Booty, uh, uh, Booty on fucking Austin? Oh, um, Lebrado Andrade. Yeah, Lebrado Andrade. And the ref, right. referee done everything he could to get him to that final bell, by the way. If I was oh, a 15 rounder, he was getting slept. Yeah, that's right. Here's one then for you Maidana versus Khan, because Joe Cortez did the same <laughs> thing. He wiped well, down with Khan's gloves about 100 times in the last week. Here you go. Come on. That, that, that was the 10th round Khan took that a shot, and he came back in it. So fair play to him on that one, Link. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well. that's his best win, I think. Fury versus Wild and One, says Thomas Newman. Yeah, good show. Cobra versus Ward. I don't know. <laughs> Fury was, was kind of backing Cobra him up, was he, in the 12th round? Cobra versus oh. Ward. Who was that one, mate? Um, no, your man said your man said Fury versus Wild and One, but I think Fury had, by the time he got back up, he was no, back he, and Wilder up, wasn't he? I like, he recovered a wee bit. Uh... Golovkin Canelo won, Danny Young says. Oof. Or I feel like easy. there should be some, but I just can't remember them. I think that's a great shout, Danny Younger, because I, 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 like, I've watched those fights a good few times, and as far as I remember in the first fight, Golovkin was getting to him down the stretch, wasn't he? Like, yeah. he wasn't was he around 10, he hurt him, I think. He hurt okay. him, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if he had another few rounds, he might have got him out of there for sure. Maybe Mac and Golovkin <laughs> 15 rounds. <laughs> uh, I'm actually right, right my brain as well. I'm trying to think something of kind of modern era. Martin Murray yeah. against Sergio Martinez. Lomachenko, Salido. Oh, yeah, good shout. Lomachenko Salido, yeah, that would have been yeah. a twist. That would have been a turn. Right. Um, try to think like some more kind of like world Salido class. Salido was a bastard, man, wasn't he? Nah, he was a bastard. He came in, he's like, what? The one who's felt to win a world title on his debut. All right, we'll see about that. That's coming fucking 14 pounds too heavy. Never mind the, the 15 rounds. Nice. 
Never mind the fifteen rounds. What about like Manny and, and Marquez and you know, especially the first two or three fights? Just let them fight for forty rounds, man. Well, yeah, yeah it was kind of inconsequential on the fourth, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I should have let it carry on for the crack. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some air. We you might have woken up again. 15 rounds later. <laughs> they, they, they need to smoke that. That fight needed to smoke that, actually, to make sure he was not <laughs> They needed to get a fucking, what you call it, swab on Marquez straight away after that fucking <laughs> the size of his back. His back like a bench. <laughs> Fuck me. I can, I can remember seeing the sparring footage for that fight. He actually knocked out a guy in sparring with the same shot. That's uh, right. See that doing around right yeah, yeah. No, if, that's and probably Roy one Jones of the most called it the same that perfect. Perfect. He's not getting up. He is not get, he's, he's not getting he... up, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Roy's uh, best commentary moment is in the Mickey Ward uh, versus Sanchez fight, isn't it? Oh, he's yeah. like, uh, someone should pay me to watch this. And they're like, someone else is paying you to watch this, someone Roy. Is you, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Someone is paying Maybe you, Roy. <laughs> Alfonso Sanchez was another good one. Oh, thank you, Ryan Deal, for that question. That was good entertainment. Right, Matty, let's move on to the action for this week. I was going to say this weekend, but it's not actually this uh, sorry. weekend. Yes. Well, I remember, it's not Roy's greatest moment on commentary. His greatest moment, or most controversial one on commentary, is when he called Bernard Hopkins before he fought Kovalev, for Kovalev an old slick coon. <laughs> <laughs> every, everyone was on fucking Twitter going, Roy's a bama man. He doesn't know what he's after saying. Oh, my God, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Dude grew up with uh. chickens in his yard. Give him a fucking break. <laughs> sure, it's all my life. He's trying to say he's got birth uh, or something like that. Exactly. No, no, I'm just trying to say he's a fucking country motherfucker. Country bumpkin is right. Country bumpkin. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, back to the heat and sound of the city, Matty. We've got the New Yorker up next weekend. Tiafimo Lopez against Jermaine Ortiz. Before we go on to that, let's have a look at the undercard. Bit of a weak undercard, I think, really. Well, we've got Keyshawn Davis against Jose Pedraza. I think Pedraza's been a good servant to the sport, but Keyshawn, if he's going anywhere, even after that Nahia Albright no contest, he should be winning over 10 rounds, oh, not yeah. 12. Was, did he win? was that a draw, or did he yeah. barely get that? and then He, tested he barely got the win, and then he tested positive, so they ended up in a no decision, I think, wasn't it, in the end? <laughs> It was for a week, day, was it? No, it was a week. I oh, apparently so. Yeah, well, that's not that, performance it, enhancing. It, it, it has to be for him to be back in the ring this quick. Quick, right? They never disclosed yeah. it. But I, I think mean, Pedraza will give him a handful. Quick. By the way, do you think so? Yeah. yeah. Do you think he has enough left? Who was the fight that Pedraza was in last? And in, in he Comey? was it Comey or was he fought since Comey? Oh, Barboza. I yeah, just think but, yeah. I don't know if this key shot is everything they say is like. I think Pedraza is a tough out for him. Ooh, was it a ten rounds? Maybe. Go ahead. Well, ten rounds might be a little bit fucking more Sue Keyshawn to do the out point and thing, but he needs a big statement win, like, and I just can't see him knocking Pedraza out. I think Pedraza has a bit left to offer. Like he's a wily guy. He's been in there with better guys than Keyshawn, like, and I just think I don't. I'm not saying he fucking win the fight, but I just think he would make him look bad in spells. Like. It's a good fight for this stage of Keyshawn's career, I think, Rob. Yeah, it's a good step, but they're saying these fucking. He beat fucking Andy Cruz and all that, like, wouldn't it? And aren't they like they're saying, like, you know, he, he's ready for anyone, like, so I know they say that about all these fighters that all that gets jaded, I think. Um, especially for lads like us, when you know, I think that's why a lot of the people fucking absolutely hate Fury from the pit of their stomach because the way he talks and all. But when we've been around, like, well, obviously, Ali precedes our time, but we've seen all the greatest trash talkers in the sport and charismatic guys in the sport, and nowadays they all just seem like copycats are the ones that went before don't they like and i think Keyshawn's in a bit of that category like isn't it they're fucking saying he's the greatest thing since sliced bread anybody can get it and all so we'll see like i do i just think Pedroza will give him a tough night like you, you might see Pedroza right, get dropped in the fucking first oh, round no. okay, cool. <laughs> well, well you know pedraz has been in so many times you never know when the end of the line is um so you know i mean he could obviously get caught quick but yeah i mean you got me thinking and i think that there's anything that really hurts davis it's that he just has these really extended periods of inactivity in the ring. And Pedraza has enough veteran about him. I think he's more than willing to fill those empty spaces. So this could be a lot closer of a fight than once considered. As a ball says about Keyshawn dominating Albright, I think he did for the first seven rounds. And then from about eight onwards, didn't Albright come into it a little bit? Although I suppose the fight was nearly done by then. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I just I don't I don't think he's that convincing. Like, and I just think Pedraza, it could be the end of the road road for him. It could be perfect timing for him to look good. 
But it could also be a fucking banana skin from like where he gets past six rounds and Madraz is still in his face. I just think the 10 round is probably giving him an advantage and he'd probably stink out the joint for a 10 round decision. Stink out the joint because then he's smoking afterwards. <laughs> One thing worth considering that that I, uh, that we haven't discussed on this fight is if it is at Keyshawn's weight of 135, Pedraza hasn't been at 135 pounds for a handful of years here. He's been campaigning at 140. Um, so I don't know. You never uh, know about that up to down. Yes, you're right, actually. So the last time he made 135 was in 2019 against Antonio Lozada, so nearly four what, years ago. That's a good observation, what month, I think. What month? It's almost five years. What month? In oh, yeah, sorry. Almost five years. Uh, May. May, so four and a half yeah. years, a little better. Yeah, almost five. Sorry, not four, yeah. All right, so that could be a struggle for him. I tell you who's not going to struggle, Mate. Abdullah Mason. I'm giving him the Wellington kiss of death, man. I think he looks the business. He's only 19 as well. He can hit. Yeah, yeah. He is, uh, he's definitely one of the exceptional prospects that you see in the top rank stable. Um, <coughs> you know, I, I, uh, the, I don't know who he's fighting. Uh, who, who, who's he up against on that undercard there? He's in against Benjamin Gament, who's eight wins, never lost, three draws, though. And in his last draw, in his last fight, sorry, he drew against Dante Strayhorn, who's a bit of a, a journeyman. So that would be a red flag. I think they're expecting uh, Mason to get rid of him. Yeah, possibly. You know, he might be a sturdy fighter uh, mm. amidst all that, so maybe he might give him some rounds in there. But Mason, I mean, he's a he's a tremendously um, gifted fighter, and I, I seem to sense a little bit higher ring IQ out of him uh, than a lot of young prospects. I, I think both him and Xander Zayas um, have a lot to offer as far as young guys. Of Zayas, probably 20, 22 now. Um, but, um, yeah, he, it'll, he's, a he's an exciting guy to watch. Um, he, it'll be interesting to see him as he's coming up. Matty, I know I'm picking on you a bit, but before we go to the main event, do you know much about Charlie Shea? I saw him in his last fight. He's 25 from California. He apparently he was a very good amateur, well supported. I was just going to say his name, by the way, that's fucking spooky. I was just going to say about him from top rank. Cause he's the other one. I thought that was pretty good. Lightweight, isn't he? Yeah, what did you think about him, Rob? Because in his last fight against Vasquez, I thought he came out the blocks really strong. Now, they said he hurt his hand, but he turned into a bit of a huff and puff merchant, I think, as the fight went on. Like, he was really trying hard to get rid of the guy, and it was like the same thing over and over again. I wonder about his versatility. <clears throat> yeah, he seems to have good fun fundamentals. Is he in with Roach, no? Oh, I can't remember who's in his corner now, to be honest. It would be that direction, on the West Coast, though. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, he looks sharp in the fight I saw him. Maybe I didn't see his last fight, but what I've seen up to him, up to that point, he looks pretty good. Like, very technical, everything off the jab. Uh, good straight right hand, backhand. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's learning on the job or whatever. It needs a bit of variation, but it might be a bit one-dimensional that you say it, but he looks very sharp. Yeah, I think Javier Centeno he's training with. Um, so you kind of see him in the corners now, Centeno. It, that's his trainer, so it's not Roach at the moment. Okay, I see. Right. Well, yeah, okay. It looks competent so far, anyway, from what I've seen. Yeah, looks, no, I agree. Pretty good. I, I do worry about the jab right hand heavy fighters oftentimes because if you don't know how to work with stuff underneath, those those shorter fighters can sure come in there and give you some weird angles and, and give you a hell of a night, if not take you out with something looping. What's the chances, Matty, of the main event? Jermaine Ortiz coming in and taking Tiafimo out with something looping. I like Ortiz. I think he's a good, honest fighter. Made his name off the Vassal Lomachenko fight. But you'd imagine Tiafimo at various stages of the career with the buoyancy of the Josh Taylor fight as well. Tio will have too much for him? I would tend to think that he would have too much for him. And what you got to remember what ultimately gave Ortiz trouble down the stretch was Lomachenko's athleticism and his boxing IQ. His IQ obviously not diminished. His athleticism at the point that he fought Ortiz was definitely greatly diminished. Um, so I, I think considering Tio's age, uh, he seems to be a little more active than, he, than he's been lately. It sounds like they're preparing for a nice 2024 for him. If he takes this fight seriously... Um, Ortiz might be able to do what no one has done before, and that is take Jor Jermaine Ortiz out, stop him. Um, because I, I just have a feeling that kind of much like the Josh Taylor fight, that the, that just the athleticism is going to be too much when coupled with what is actually a tremendous ring IQ from Tiafimo Lopez, you know, despite er everything that we negatively say about him on his lesser nights. Yeah, I think that 
from what we've seen, Rob, in the past with um, Tiafimo, it the, the fights are kind of his to lose. I know Ortiz is big, he's tall, he's awkward, he's given decent sort of B-level fighters trouble. Obviously not Lomachenko, but the, Jamel Herring, Moran in his last fight, he's sort of a level above those guys. But this is Tiafimo's to lose. We know at his peak, he's a quality box puncher, he can find angles, he can punch. If he gets you on the hook, he finishes you. Remember the job he done on Kame, he showed Ring IQ himself against Lomachenko. He's a damn good fighter. It feels like it's his... He could be his own worst enemy, if anything else. He could be the man who beats himself. If he turns up, he's going to beat Ortiz. Of course. And he, uh, and I think stop him as well. I think Maddie's right. But um, I was very high on Tiafimo Lopez. I backed him to knock out Kami. I kind of always thought the power was real. Um, he, like you said, he's a boxer puncher. And like Maddie said, he's supremely athletic. Like So I think the Cambosis fight and the kind of the fights after the Sandor Martins and stuff like I think you're seeing him not fully dialed in and I don't think it's like he's his own worst enemy I think his dad's probably his worst enemy you know that yeah, way um, so most of the stuff that we say about him is not really detracted from him as a fighter it's just we know there's other factors that play that's kind of taken away from his greatness on certain nights but he's only a young kid I think the Cambosis fight was an off night I think he was probably struggling at the weight as well it didn't take him seriously but he lost that fight fair and square the same way as I think he won the Lomachenko fight fair and square. And I think after the way he handled Taylor, it has to show like what a level of a fighter he is, what, whether Taylor has nothing left or whatever. He couldn't do anything with him. He absolutely fucking kept him at range all night. He was beating him up. He was backing him to the ropes. Um, so I think if he's honest, dialed in, and he seems to be... I think it's mental with him. Like, I think if he believes he's the best in the world, he'll go out there and blow everybody away. Like, you just got to keep him on that trajectory. I think he's had a lot of fucking... He's not the fucking sharpest knife in the drawer. That's the thing. Like, you know what I mean? He's had this situation with the missus, hasn't he? Like, the fucking whole divorce thing. He's trying to bring the baby in the ring and all that. The dad's everywhere. They bombed out Camachi. There's tons of stuff going on with him in the background. But judging him as a fighter, hard to see anybody beating him when he's on his on his best, best, best night. Like, um and yeah it's good that he's active so yeah i back him to get the stoppage in this fight i'd be going tko before round nine Mac. well one fight i'd love to see and they sent a, a contract to him but he was injured subriel matias we know he's puerto rican he takes a shot he gives one as well footed him against tiafimo in the garden in new york That's... i think it'd be class Horny shit, that is. I thought I'd say, uh, fucking, yeah, no, Mati uh, Matthias. I, I, we were speaking about him on the on the pod a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, I was getting him confused with someone or something. But yeah, no, I've, <laughs> I like he's he's ruthless. He's fucking. He can look bad in fights and then turn it around with power. He's there to trade. I think that's a tremendous fight. I give I give uh, Lopez the edge in it. Oh, on boxing ability, the but, feet, footwork, yeah, yeah, the footwork and the long jab as well. I think if you yeah. get off on him in early stages, he he started causing problems. But be an explosive fight, I'm, I'm here for that. Like, well, yeah. as we've seen, the way that you win rounds off of Matias is by keep you, you keep moving around him and you keep your your, your hands moving. At the end of the day, you, you got to try to keep he's him too occupied. Long, isn't he? And he gets in and out too quickly, Lopez. When he's at it, like yeah. he's, but, he's yeah, good but on he, his toes. You know, the, yeah. The question is, Rob. Or... Yeah, you ha you have to be able to, to hurt him, but yeah. the thing is, you also have to be able to do that at t for twelve rounds, and to Good be points. able to keep your feet and your hands moving the way that you need to for twelve rounds. That's yeah, Matthias is a boogie man, isn't he? Like if you don't, he's like Jason Voorhees. Like if you don't get him out of there in six I rounds, he's there. I can't give you mad. You can yourself, Rob. If you're getting pressured by someone who's just constantly hitting you or co constantly walking you down, and you know you you just kind of get them to back off. And eventually, you're going to you're get dragged into that. You could get dragged into it, yeah, but... I, I don't want to even think like... about someone backing me down. I was I'm back boxing training only two weeks, and I was doing the sprints last week. <laughs> I'm doing oh, it with yeah. Dean Welsh, and he goes to me, how are those sprints, from? And I was like, horrible. <laughs> Nasty, horrible. I feel like getting sick. He was like, yeah, but you get fit though, won't you? And I was like, yeah. I was like, imagine fighting <laughs> someone. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. Your hammy's not shortly, mate. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Back again tomorrow. Fucking hell. Good so luck. Lopez by uh, just to let you know, Lopez by KO Rob is paying almost two to one right now by decision, a little less than even money. I bet you're over I think that two one. to one's worth a pile, isn't it? And, and something else, Maddie. What else have we got in the mix there for a pile? Maybe Pedraza to go over six rounds with Keyshawn. Mm. Do you want? Do you want to curse an old man with my stupid betting? Is that, <laughs> what do you have? Here. <laughs> <laughs> like the devil on your shoulder. What else? Well, who else is fight next week? There you go, Matty. Lopez KO and that fight, other fight to go over six rounds. What, what, what are you getting for it? 
Uh, well, no... Oh, you're talking like a sit like seven to twelve rounds. I don't know if they have the half betting yet. Let's see here. Let me log well, back in. T T <laughs> Let me log back in. <laughs> Classic. I was just looking at. It. I put it down. I, I don't have to be looking at gambling all day long. I don't have a problem, guys. My God. While well, you're looking, it's Johnny. Johnny says. Ground. Not convinced by Tio. I think he might have got lucky with Taylor being completely nah, dead at the well, she, I, I, I don't she, think we agree. I don't that. think so either. I, I, I think there's a bit of combination as well. But I, I think is I agree with everything Rob has said. Lopez somehow mentally just got himself absolutely spot on for a fight. I think that's part of his problem. Mentally, he loses his focus. You've, you've seen him outside the ring. There'd be an absolute mental wreck, breaking down in tears, crying on his honeymoon type of stuff and that. I mean, serious shit, like, Didn't we all... serious, serious mental health problems and somehow on that night, because I, I, I expected Taylor <laughs> to do the business, as you know, and he just, he, no, he it, shared it, it was his best performance since Lomachenko. Put it he that might way. have ruined Taylor that night, to be honest with you. I he grew in confidence, Rob, as well, didn't he? He grew in confidence that night. You could see yeah. him visibly growing as the roads went on. Yeah, it felt like he was back or something. I, yeah. I just I don't... Game he gave him a game. It was a Gordo or something like that. It was something he was an amateur. That's how he kind of fought and and then out constantly on the move, hard to pin down. Who was and... the f- sparring footage they released recently of him and someone? And he was giving him uh, work. Might have been pissed. Tank. Yeah, it might have been Tank. Oh, it might have been Haney. Years and years ago. Oh, it's old. It's old, but he was fucking. Yeah, but you're, you're talking about Must years like ago. 15, like 15, 16. Mad aggressive, like on the front foot all the time, like fucking. Who Lopez was, was? Jim was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be it was him who cut fewer. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think my theory is? Up a tie or no? Yeah, I We're, think so. Andy, you're you're looking at just a, a shade better than three to one for KO round seven through twelve. On. Tiafimo is on the parlay on Tio. No, you don't have to parlay it. That's a single bet, sir. So we do like the single parlay. bet. Do the single bet and do Pedraza to last over six. Stuff right to go over six, and then tank me next week when you get your four and a half to one payout. <laughs> this is betting advice. <laughs> betting advice, sir. Tell you bet responsibly it's like and drink Greek responsibly. Guy on UFC is that Rob's rolling in the Irish the Irish tip stuff? <laughs> <laughs> That's a laugh. I I got paid there to do it. Tough fucking... accountant. Fucking freestyle thing for Jack Daniels, and they put it out there like Crow Kelly returns to the mic and all, and then the ad is like drink responsibly. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Fuck off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be associated with such. Oh, Rob doesn't want to endorse that kind of mess. <laughs> Tell me that was part of the fucking deal. Drink responsibly. <laughs> who, who wants to live past 65? This is <laughs> not in this day and age. Let me tell you when the robots are going to be running the show. Oh, take me off now. Yeah. Let me get the episode expi- fucking whatever. Let me get the episode a thousand and take me off. You're, you're gonna expire right before they perfect the hand job robot. You're gonna regret it. Perfected? I prototyped it. <laughs> he was what odds of the draw? Mate says Ray. But draw for what? You've drawn in Ray. I'm now. not looking at the draw. <laughs> that is probably about eighteen to one, fifteen. Sugar Ray Robinson. <laughs> Oh dear, that should be good anyway. It's on a Thursday, Andy, isn't it? Is, is, something, is it the Super Bowl or something they were saying? Super is is that on this Sunday, weekend? I think, guys. So the boss still have all the thing because right. they moved Shakua last time, didn't they? So that's a good uh, precursor for this one. I can't remember what that was for, but yeah, we make sense. Last Vegas Super Bowl final, by the way. The, yeah, the, the 49ers and who else? The Chiefs. That's the Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs. Where are they the from? The Chiefs. Kansas, Kansas City. City. Kansas City oh, Chiefs yeah. and who else? Sorry, who else in the final? San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers. 49ers. I was right. I was right. Go, go me. There you are. American football advice on a Sunday evening. Who are you picking, my? I San Francisco puts a lot of points on the board, and that's something that this Kansas City team really hasn't been able to do um, since Hill left. It's I mean, it's good to see Kelsey getting his season together in the later half I mean, and into the playoffs. It's the best time to do it. But I think without having another big weapon like they had with Tyreek Hill, um, their offensive output's a little bit controlled. And with uh, San Francisco, Brock Purdy's playing great. He's got two great running backs behind him. He's got good tight ends, multiple options for receivers. Uh, I, I just think they have too many weapons at offense. And the, you're probably looking at San Francisco 31, uh, Kansas City 24. It's funny because I used to be mad into American football when I was a kid because the quarterback on the Buffalo Bills name was Jim Kelly. 
So I just supported them because his name was Kelly. And then they got to like three fucking Super Bowl finals <laughs> in a row. I lost every one of them. I was like, I don't watch this shit anymore. But yeah, uh, I was thanks for putting the me. luck of the Irish on him, Rob. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> like, I was at work, like, and I'm talking to these young lads, and I don't realize what age I am. Like, so I'm talking to these young lads, and I was like, oh, yeah, I went to an American football game with my dad, like, in like 1988. And they're like, what age are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fuck it. Like, fuck it. 88. Jesus Christ. Dude, that, that, was a good, dude. that was a good team, though, man. Thurman Thomas was a hell of Thurman a Thurman Thomas, back. hell of a running back. Best Buffalo Bills running back since OJ Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> and he also, awesome. had a, he, he also had a better post career despite not getting into acting. You got to get into that, too. There we are. Hey, I'm going to transition to Hamza Shiraz from this, Matty. Take an icky, well, icky, icky got- segue there, Matty. <laughs> we can talk about his gloves fit. Is what? At least Hamza Shiraz's his gloves fit. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it, it don't fit you. Must have quit. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Right, Andy, we'll go to you for that one then, for coming off that one liner. That little tra- seamless transition into uh, Hamza Sh- Is it Copper Box Arena? Hamza Shiraz next Saturday evening. Against Liam Williams, WBC silver title, Commonwealth boxing title. The undercard doesn't look like it's got too much on. Although Anthony Yard appears to be on the undercard. So is Carol Itoma, uh, Sam Noakes, Masood Abdullah. Not worried about any of them. Hamza Shiraz, 18 and against Liam Williams. Uh, I think it's been set up for Shiraz to knock him out and move yeah, on to better things, probably. Possibly, mate. Again, it's all about what's, what's Williams won at this point. I mean, it's, a, it's a title as well. Commonwealth belt. He's done it at that, mm-hmm. that level now. But again, it was ambition to put Liam Williams has got and. But the, the, the two big L's was it? Who's it? He lost to again. You bank and who was the other one? Uh, Demetrius Android. I must have done since said nothing much. Is it like a fight or two back? So uh, yeah, yeah. I personally think unless I think it will be got a few rounds, but I think Shiraz could possibly stop him running about the latter half of the fight if he. But um, who else is on the card? You see Anthony Yard. Um, Yards oh, in the court. Oh, that's yeah, the kind of keep yeah, busy yeah. one. There's a Sam Noakes against Louis Sylvester, kind of domestic level fair as well. Yeah, I think that's no great. Yeah. Cash Ash, fuck, he's back as well. Oh, yeah, it's, not, it's, not it's all right. I'll keep us going. There's a Dazon card as well at the same time, so we can maybe flip between the two. I'm, I'm breathless with anticipation. Tell me who is who's what's that card? Um, it's a good question, actually. It's an excellent question, Andy. <laughs> um, <laughs> here we are: uh, Liam Dillon against Reese Bellotti and Shannon Ryan against Emma Dolan and Maisie Rose of Courtney that nice. against Jasmina. I'll, I'll hand over to Matty. You know, there seems to be a lot of women on that card, so I'll hand it. Well, hang on. We'll, we'll get to we'll get to Shear as Williams first of all. Rob, we'll get to you on that one. Williams well, is on the he's... retirement road. Says Danny Young. I thought he retired already, to be honest with you. Dan. <laughs> I hadn't seen him in that long. Like, well, I'm saying I could remember the last time he fought, and I just seen was it Andrade? Last time I saw him, I think was Andrade. Uh, ah, he got actually... dropped the first round, day and he got he got he, he right. done well to hang in for the for the duration. I'm he sure. fought Eubank after that, Rob, and he's had two nondescript wins over Journeyman since. Yeah, I remember thinking Eubank was going to beat him like a fucking uh, piece of meat in a butcher shop. Shout out to Carl Weathers. Um, I don't, yeah, I thought, like, I remember actually the fucking Dazone card, I, I subscribed to that on the phone that night. I was staying in the mother-in-law's house with the missus or after being at some 30th or something, and I was, like, wanting to see the fight, so I had to fucking subscribe to the zone to watch Williams and Andrade uh, for the free trial or whatever, on the fucking, to watch it live. Shocking. Um, look, he's, a, he's a, a capable guy, Williams. He's fucking, his hat is in it for sure in boxing. He probably didn't get as many opportunities early. Got a few paydays. He's not. There's levels in it. He's not at the levels like, and I'd expect Shiraz to stop this version of him for sure. Within six as well, I think he'll he'll get into a rhythm. I think he'll get on the jab. I think he'll be able to find him. And I just don't think. I think Williams is just. It'll be a step too far for him at his age and with the fights he's had to go to the well under that kind of firepower. I just think it'll be a pretty one sided beat down and a stoppage before six. Uh, Matty, I agree with Rob. I think Shearer is going to be too fast, too fresh. He likes to let his hands go. I think once he catches Williams, gets him on the hook, he's going to batter him. I think there's a fair chance of that. That's probably the likely outcome as far as looking at. But I think there's also the chance of uh, Williams staying in there, even if he gets dropped. 
once, twice, whatever, like he did against Eubank and seeing it out to the final bell and, and, or, and providing some rough moments along the way. If not taking out the younger, less experienced fighter in the later rounds after the younger fighter might have gotten a little too aggressive after finding early offensive success. If there's anything that Williams is, it's a survivor with late round capabilities. Um, so I, um, I'm not saying the upset is likely here, but I also um, I, I think if if Pedraza has a chance at uh, at Keyshawn, I think very much that uh, Williams has a very has a chance at Shiraz, especially late. Good chat. Mr. Dermo says Shiraz won't play with his food. I agree. I think once he hurts him, he'll smash him to bits. But we shall see. We shall see. Uh, Friday evening, Park Community Centre. Exactly. In Sheffield, uh, Thomas Asomba is fighting for the European bantamweight title against Ellie Conkey from France. Al Siesta is one of the matchmakers, as is former journalist Steve Lillis, who has now moved into Hold the... Hold on. El El Siesta Conkey. is the name of the, of the company, so the nap. What? Al Siesta, yeah. Uh, He's a Belarusian. He's been on the podcast. Oh, his yeah, name is El Siesta. I thought it was E-L, like El. <laughs> I'm like, that. fuck, who are you going to get on those fights? Watch a Griselda all week, him, is he? <laughs> <laughs> He's doing his best. Right. Anyway, onto the zone. It's the only place we can go from this. Indigo. Uh, Eddie Hearn matching boxing <laughs> we mentioned earlier. Cameron Vuong's on the show. John Hedges. Uh, who else we got? The women. Ma- Maisie Rose. Shannon Ryan. Liam Dillon in the main event, Andy, against Reese Bellotti. Bellotti's had a few chances. He's got five losses now. Dillon, he, I'm trying to think, he's been on the pod as well, actually. Shout out to Liam Dillon. He upset Kais Ashfak, didn't he, last time for the British uh, title, the Commonwealth on the line as well. That was in Newcastle. He's back defending it against Reese Bellotti. We like a bit of Liam Dillon on here. Yeah, and I think this was the, this was the card that they'll get delayed. What was the one that was meant to happen on again that fell apart? One of the... Oh, yes, with the Cyrus Patterson Connor Walker fight. Is, is no, this was it? No, I'm sure that this Bellotti and Dylan wasn't the main event, I don't think. Right. And anyway, so anyway, they, they moved the date, so at least you know, these guys are getting are getting paid, but there's nothing really there much to write home about, mate. The, the, the main event is, is what it is, mate. It's, it's, it's two domestic level guys. Um, Below, I th- I'm going. To, I'll, I'll go with Dylan, mate. I think, I think he wins uh, below at the same time. I think he's, he's, he's had his day in that as well. But who knows? It might. It might just dredge it up. He has. He has got the dig on him as well. So we'll wait and see. But I've, I'm out next Saturday, so I'm watching it live. And Oof. Rob, Rob's getting that design trial back again, aren't you? For this, I don't need it these days. Um, <laughs> shout out to all the lads who were on the pod, by the way. I, was probably never on early enough to hear your stories, but we wish as well. Um, uh, no, this is not. It's not the best kind, is it? Like <laughs> the zone, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be pushing this one to to drive the subscribers up to the zone. I don't think. Like, um, but Lottie, I, I laugh when I hear these UK domestic fighters' names all the time because I can only remember them based off Aussie's accent saying their names on the pod because I haven't a fucking clue about watching Reese them. Reese I'm not watching Reese Bellotti on a fucking Saturday night. Sounds like a name I would watch on a Saturday night. Uh, no, I, I th- uh, I'm up for Dylan. Dylan isn't my man in this one. Um, Bob's young fella uh, making his way in the pro game. Um, we made him basically. He came on the pod and fucking now he's on the zone. And we're not on the zone. So, you know what I mean? We're giving too many of these fucking imposters a hand up. And uh, no, I, I watch it like or whatever, just for the for the pod or whatever. It's on on a Saturday night. I'll throw it on, of course, but um, not really looking forward to it, as you can tell. Absolutely not. Uh, Matty, anything from you? you uh, does any to zone beef or are you going to be tuning into this one? About three o'clock in the afternoon, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, just watch what I can of it so that I can uh, maybe have an opinion when hosting next week. But um, it, it, interestingly enough, it seems like uh, all the action is uh, going to be uh, on uh, the weekdays this go around. Uh, anything, any pro, no pro box you mentioned it's going to Valentine's Day. Anything from the weekend in America that I might have missed before we go on to Bellevue? So there was an MVP card uh, that oh, uh, went on um, this weekend, and that was uh, headlined by Aston Silva. And hold on, let me get this card pulled up here the best I can. And uh, the, you know, the main event uh, wasn't um, that uh, 
fantastic. Uh, Silv just kind of bossed, boxed his way around Estevan Falco. I think he might have had like a shoulder injury or something. Uh, dropped him in the last round, though, um, which, which I always like to see somebody that's still giving it a rip uh, to pull it out in the last round. But what I really liked on that card actually uh, was on the uh, the undercard. You had a, a six-round battle uh, between undefeated fighters on their uh, Benigno Aguilar and Corey Marksman. Um, this was a great back and forth battle for anyone that can catch it. I thought Marksman did enough to get the victory, but it ended up going uh, to a six round draw between these two undefeated fighters at lightweight. Um, really a, a bunch of good exchanges. Uh, both guys uh, seemed to uh, hurt at various times, uh, but I just thought Marksman, uh, you know, given his last name too. Uh, he, uh, sniper. He was, He's got to be well, a yeah, sniper. He was, he was far more <laughs> accurate and uh, and and sharper with his shots and more hurtful. I thought, but uh, I think the good story uh, on this one was uh, Julian Smith, known as the Quiet Storm, because yes. he is deaf, coming in and beating uh, undefeated Orestes Velasquez in what was a crazy fight, where Smith hurt and dropped him early, uh, and then Velasquez. Uh, was able to kind of uh, get his footing in the middle rounds, but it was doing it just like in the worst. Hold on. Uh... Do you say he's deaf? Yeah, he's, he's, caught, he's trying to ask us yes. to learn sign language. The, the, the ref he's has trying to be very He's trying to communicate with him by sign language and all. What, he goes ding, ding, that's the bell? How is this going to knock it down? The, and the referee has to indicate to him, doesn't he, Matty? I think. They jump. They got to jump in, and they're and they're getting better with it. At, but there's been some fights where they weren't in position. Wait a minute here. I can't see them. this one anywhere. Be like, honest with you. By the way, I hope this person on his shorts or something. Zzz, 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 that's the bell. I hope this person gets <laughs> gets gets signed by Eddie Hearn at some point, and he gets that post fight interview, and Eddie's giving it all the razzmatazz, and then you got you've got the uh, you've got the, the person in the sign language back saying what all the bollocks he talks. Stuff. His mom comes in and signs for him in the post fight interview. Oh. It's a nice story. It really is. It, it, yeah, well. it is. And it was so well, exactly. Fight. But so Velasquez started really holding in the middle rounds and just kind of disrupting it and uh, and uh, kind of ruined the momentum that Smith had been building. But then Smith just started throwing more as Velasquez was trying to tie him up on the inside. And in the ninth round, he just started busting him up. And uh, he did catch him a little bit after the bell in the ninth. But, uh, I mean, considering that uh, Velasquez went down a couple of times, had a point deducted, uh, it was uh, his corner actually pulled him out before the 10th round, uh, giving uh, the W to the Quiet Storm in, in again, what was just a really crazy-ass fight. <laughs> Should have called him the Death um, Leopard. <laughs> but what I really liked is when he was when he was uh, in the eighth and ninth round when he was starting to really figure Velasquez out again. He was showing some swagger in there. He was shimmying. He was shaking. Uh, you got to give it to Julian Smith. Uh, it's it, it's a cool story. It is the Def Leppard walking to the ring with Helen Keller. <laughs> <laughs> Marley Matlin. <laughs> get a back Scott on. Get a I back can't Scott believe that he's fell in the fucking ring and he can't hear the bell. This is fucking... What? Oh, he, he, no. He could, he could do some motivational fucking commercials for kids. Motivation. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, like, Steve. Well, Steve. Steve. Like, remember, if there's anything... I would have thought, to like, honestly... Like, I'm, not, I'm not against the kid. I want him to do well, but I would have thought, like, when you're passing the medical, being able to hear is one of the fucking prerequisites. Can you hear this bell, asshole? No. Okay, I don't think we see it. Listen to my instructions. What I say? You must obey. Do you, do you think they <laughs> want that lawsuit? Like, yeah, let them fight. How, often, fight. how often have you heard Kenny Bailey saying, you know, listen, listen to my instructions, obey my commands at all times? You know, if I, in, the, in the event of a knockdown, please go to the neutral corner when I tell you to. <laughs> oh, we have to move on before I don't impress them with their fella. Come on, let's get out of this. <laughs> Steve, we need, yes. to get this guy, we need to get this guy in the podcast. That's what Danny Young says, it'd be an interesting listen. <laughs> Maybe we could contact his management and see if we could send him some questions. Yeah, I'll leave up to you, No, we, we definitely don't want to be doing that. <laughs> definitely we, don't. We... <laughs> <laughs> well, we could ask him nice questions. We don't have to be fucking <laughs> dick about it. Bye, just don't phone him. <laughs> right, shout out to Julian Smith. Anything else on Miss Marty? <laughs> I, well, I don't know. We're probably missing a lot of things yeah. on this show, Steve, but that's a lot I think of so. longer uh, yeah. discussion. Right. 
<laughs> Let's get on to Belly of the Weeks, for goodness sake. Episode 558. <laughs> Rob's here. <laughs> Andy's here. Matty. And me, Steve. I don't know what to play us in, but let's find something quickly. Oh, here we are, the guard, he'll do. Yeah. One of the things on my list here to ask you about is you've got a mass of tattoos on your legs, yeah? Tell us about the tattoos. All right, there they are. Oh, there we go. Wow. Yeah, actually, I do. Tell us, t- tell us about the tattoos. Um. Okay, well, I mean, I've got tattoos on my arms as well, but this, the, so I've got a dragon, and I mainly got that one, honestly, for art. But then I've got the phoenix. I've got to show you this, if you don't mind. Okay, I'm I've sure no one will mind. So that's a phoenix, if you can tell. Yes, I can see the phoenix, yeah. Yep, and that is like, I don't know if you, you know, obviously everyone knows about a phoenix, but a phoenix is the rise of the phoenix. You rise from the ashes, you know what I mean? So, so it's symbolic up, for you. It's symbolic, yeah, definitely. The phoenix is definitely symbolic for me. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stand, says, can you clip the guard sniffing MJP, please? You always bet us behind us, Chuck. We, 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 we saw that the other week. You what? need to get up on the on his Francesca Hennessy fucking Instagram clip. She's teenage. She's powerful. <laughs> and Matty says she lives on a dark beautiful. street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Everything dad's looking for in a woman. Fucking savages. <laughs> I listened back, Matthew. I laughed when you said that, man. <laughs> Brutal bastard, like poor guy. Glad it's so memorable for you, Steve. I'm <laughs> glad it's never like any of my breakdowns of a fight or anything like that. It's you know, no, we forget all that. Shit. It's humor. the old time. Even the sun shines on the dog's eyes the other day. You get me? <laughs> well, and I like to remember those moments, Rob, because there's so few and far between. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, uh, what we've got I, here. I, I have left after killing moment. me with the deaf boxer, honestly. I have to, after killing me with that one, <laughs> fucking hell. is that Sorry. the failure of the week? Just the fact oh, that the, uh, deaf boxer, I can't believe the fucking uh, box is such a shit show. Let a fellow who's deaf fight in a sport where you need to hear the bell. I can't, anyway. Go ahead, go ahead. I'd worry more for a blind boxer, to be fair. Well, like leave it up to Connor Ben, you're going to see a lot of them, <laughs> <laughs> but they won't see you. <laughs> Well, there's plenty to see there anyway, Andy. <laughs> I think that was in Boston, you know. I think, was that the Andrade Saunders? Uh, so I remember a year ago, like. Oh, I think it was. Remember Skull I jumper. He's just probably wondering what her handicap is. She has a like memorable face. Uh, I, I, I think it's a Pringle jumper, that one, actually, to be fair. <laughs> but anyway. handicap is back pain, Rob. She's a beautiful woman and she's obviously very talented because we've seen her around a lot since this interview. Vince McMahon with a proof of her. Oh, she was bought in all right. Maybe she was made to disappear after that moment, Rob. Huh? Huh? Quite as genuine. Uh, let's go back to September 2013. Tyson Fury was uh, given off. The cut is genuine. Correct, you can't box with the cut. Spit or reposted. Correct, that's to be cancelled. That's why he's cut, Rob, so he can pull out shit out. I actually, at the time, I believe David Hay had fucking pulled out of the fight because he didn't want it. Like, uh, so I can't really sit here now and criticize the people who were saying the same about Fiori. Like, it looks a bit spooky, but to me, there's too, the stakes are too high. And the fact that the rematch date is set so quickly um, just lead me to believe that the cut is genuine. But whatever. I get you. We're in Belly of the Week territory. This is not time to be serious. Yeah. Let's slag some people off. Like Keith Thurman, Matty. Uh, Thurman, yeah. March 30th, is about proving I was, is, forever, will be one of the greatest fighters in boxing. <laughs> well, he has he has an endorsement from Rick Glazer. He says, if you're going to bet on the 11 to 1 underdog, Keith Thurman, note the quickly receding hairline. Not a good <laughs> sign for the completely inactive Thurman. Shake my head. <laughs> Rick Glazer, man, what a legend. He's sucking shooting of the dead there, isn't he? Fucking <laughs> okay, hell. <laughs> Herman hasn't had that much of a power since. I'll, 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 just, I'll just, I'll just bring my one forward on this one because I was going to, I was going to put up a, a, a oh, Keith Herman one as well, mate. Because Tim Zhu just left Australia. I think it was just late last week, and he gave an interview at the airport, and it's like hashtag pray for Thurman. Like he is on a, but it, it could be pretty brutal. I'm, I'm assuming Matty's going to be agreeing with me here. This is this shit is like seventy dollars pay per view in the states, by the way. Is what it, the is fuck it? is Heyman thinking? This is their debut on Amazon, isn't it? 
Rob, yeah. and they're 100 percent right, and I will be not watching this fight. Ooh. No, seriously, like they're taking a the piss with that, and even the undercard, I think, is is it Raleigh and Raleigh and fucking Cruz is the undercard, and Tim Zhu and Keith Thurman is the main. They're wanting seventy dollars for that on Amazon. Good luck, fucking wasn't it? Was homie Jeff Bezos to be fucking getting rid of Al Heyman fucking quicker than liquor? Jesus Christ! Where, where's the fucking primer here? You know, like I honestly, I paid for for I paid more, probably more money for worse cards at the end of the day. But the fact of the matter is, this is your Shit. kickoff, a pay per view. You're asking me for more money right out of the gate. It's not just not. You're wanting, you're wanting Keith Herman, who hasn't fought in fucking God knows when, at 154, fighting an Australian <laughs> on fucking American pay per view. And I'm, I can't, I can't help it. That's a fucking belly of the week in itself, that one. Hang on, it. I hope it tanks. I, I hope it just absolutely fails. It's going oh, to fucking main tank, Davis. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a total bummer because, you know, I love Keith. I don't count him out in this fight. But if I'm watching it, it's going to be because maybe I'll take a drive up to the casino and play some blackjack and hang out in the Ooh. in the, the sports betting room. I like it. There you are. Should have done that last week, last night at Conor Ben's fight. I'm sure that's what most people were doing instead of being at the fight, Steve. I'm sure they were. Uh, Josh Ford says you got to love a bit of Rick Glazer. Well, not for everybody, unfortunately. Talking to Mean Spirited, have you come across the Is Rick Glazer Dead Yet? Twitter. <laughs> Who can the fuck come up with this? Fuck's <laughs> <laughs> <Sick>, man. <laughs> I'm going to see if that account still exists. When did that come up? I don't know. <laughs> Rick Glazer. No, no. <laughs> There's some mad bastards about it. <laughs> Get a life for yourselves. What the? <laughs> Look at the head of image, says MB. <laughs> Oh gosh, man! Some some mad man about. Uh, Connor Ben was fighting this weekend. We've got a little Connor Ben mega mix for you, Andy. Uh, Connor wants mega fight with Devin Haney in the UK. Was one of them. We had the Connor Ben round table. They look, they all look delighted to be there, don't they? And uh, then we had Connor saying we could make the Crawford fight next. That was another one there. And then it, a spin in a positive. Yeah, Connor said it's exciting to have four Essex boys going to Vegas with George, Jimmy, and Johnny Fisher and his Bosch army. I don't think that's been done before, and it shows the opportunities that have presented themselves throughout the process. First Orlando, now fighting in Sin City. It's great to fight in the States and get my name out over there. There you yeah, are, Andy, to all the haters. Yeah. This is this is an opportunity for Connor. Yeah, dude, fight in front of a thousand people. That's what it's all about, you know. I thought it was like bigger star, you know, the big names would be fighting in the T, you know, the, T the, the T Mobile, I think it is. Getting in there. Uh, he's earning the big money. The Bosch Army, though. Yeah, uh, failing a drugs test, allegedly. It doesn't have to be a negative, Andy. I think that's the message here. Two drugs tests, mate. Get it right. Sorry, two drugs tests. I, I wonder how many members of the Bosch army it takes to not be able to use a regular elevator and have to use the freight option. <laughs> <laughs> the one at the back where they carry the food up and the truck things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a safe place for them to be. We're going to be going <laughs> single file today, folks. <laughs> oh, dear me. It was Landy Lawrence here. He said, I'm the modern day Hopkins. I can keep doing this for years. I'm not sure what this is, Matty, because it ain't fighting, that's for sure, anyway. El Sopi Cubano. Isn't he on that card you were talking about? He's fighting Zarafa, isn't he? On that. Yes, yes. Card? Is he like the fucking 160 Garcia, pound he's champion at some. <laughs> he's, is he like fucking middleweight champion or something? Nobody cares about yeah, middleweights yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's uh, crazy. You've, like... got, you've, you've got that. Uh, Fandora's face. And, is, it, is he called Sergey? That's a decent fight. I've just seen yeah. it here. Actually. It's not a bad. I'm telling you, it's not a bad card. The bullshit is asking for a pay per view out of the gate to introduce yourself as a platform for boxing. Mm -hmm. Suck my dick. Yeah, but see, they, they also got caught out with that as well because that's how they started it off free. Remember, we used to, we used to in the very early days of the PBC, we used to get it on ITV over here, eh? and then it's. I think we only got one, maybe two cards. Ever? Trying, Where'd you remember? Yeah, I think so. But it was, one of them was, a, was quite a big, quite a big fight. I'm sure. Wasn't Cruz Javonta on, or was that that was Channel Five? Wasn't that thing showed that? I can't it? mind. They did, you know. That's more recent memory after they've done some things. The kickoff when they over here, I mean, they had it on like four different channels, and it was ridiculous. Like you could see like none of them over where you guys are. Uh, yeah. What a shame. Here's one for you, Rob. Shakura, I know you're a big fan. Well, Navarrete's promoter isn't. He, Navarrete's promoter on Shakura Stevenson. He's more boring than Mass at three in the afternoon. 
<laughs> I'm not sure which one I want to go to, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know. By, by three o'clock, you can get a pretty good buzz on. I'd say three o'clock mass is well, I, in the morning. I, I'm, I'm what they call a lapsed Catholic, aren't they? Like, so I don't fucking really subscribe to the views of the church or whatever, but the odd time I have to turn up for weddings and funerals, but I always get confused at the part where you have to kneel or stand up or whatever, so I just end up like slumping back onto the seat. My missus making faces at me and all that because I don't know the routine, so don't come to me about mass at three in the afternoon. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Last time I was in the chapel was at my uncle's funeral. <laughs> He's fucking bro. My other uncle, we've seen them going running about the coffin with the holy water and sprinkling about the place how they do it with that kind of, I don't know what he is, but they're fucking throwing it at the coffin. It fucking landed on him, you, you cunt, you thought he was going to fucking melt. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, one of the last ones I was at was my uncle's funeral and he wrote his own eulogy, he got a son-in-law to read it out and I said, That's uh, awesome. thanks everybody for coming and if you didn't make it, don't worry, I'm not going to be at yours. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Good bit of banter. Um, I'm not sure who this guy is. Justin Gaither or something, but someone put this in. Yeah, yeah. This is a, a, beat him up or something? It's a, well, he might have got beaten up too hard, Rob, because this is a suspicious tweet. I wonder who wrote this for him. He said, Blessed MMA, brother, you know don't when hit that I so when knocked down. Who to title Vegas? Remember to the chin. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> we know. It looks like Isaac could be a bit there. Probably he's sack on it there. <laughs> you, worry, you worry like if this is a religion that's spreading or something and we're getting <laughs> caught off guard. It's like, it's like Buati and Aziz, two, two bums. <laughs> two bums. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, I think Isaac must have written that one. It's happening this Saturday in Santa oh, Cruz, Bolivia. Yes, yeah. Saul El Phoenix Assassino Farah faces Resendo Mercado for the ninth oh. time in a heavyweight goods match. This time it's personal. I oh, think man. this time might be the time Rosendo has his number. Yeah, and by the way, it's it's their ninth time meeting, and I think Rosendo's current record is two and ten. But you know, well, well, you no, this is going to be his baby. Marquez moment. This one is when he's going to catch him with the fucking overhand right, fly out as far as head back to fucking <laughs> Bolivia. Was, was this the yeah. asshole that kicked him when he was on the on the canvas? Let's hope so. Or... Oh, it might have been. You know, I don't oh, think no. it was. That was, well, deb- that was a debut. That was a debutant MMA fighter Pedro, who didn't know that, that you're not somebody. supposed to kick him when they fall yeah. on the ground, wasn't it? But that yeah, was Pedro. Somebody called him. You got to ask the major question: Is who is the promoter? Who's the referee? Who's uh, the judges in this fight? Oh, hang on. The fight has. Huh? It's not even on Boxrec. Nothing's on Boxrec since 2020. Who for so far? Yeah, the, the last. <laughs> ah, he's not paying, not paying the sanction it. fees. All right, the last That's tie, the be. last fight is against Rosendo Mercado. I'm not sure which which fight that was in the. It was a twelve rounder in 2020. Are you trying oh. to say Saul Farah has made off with the fucking sanctioning fees from the Bolivian Boxing Association team? Is that what you're trying to get at? Well, you know the way on Box right, Rob, you have like Box Pro, Amateur, and stuff. On here, you have Box Pro, Referee, Matchmaker, Promoter. They're all the tabs. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way it's called. Riesgo Total and the two lads, like one looks like a young Billy Joe Saunders and the other lad looks like Douglas Murray. They're going to have a fight on the fucking undercard, the these two. Hi, <laughs> Farah. Right, Farah is refereeing all the fights between the guys that. So Farah has like 15 fights with Esteban Hillman Tababare, and then he has another pile of fights against Cesar Mamani. But he also refereed a fight between Tababari and Mamani. <laughs> You remember that time he launched his belt at some in some <laughs> shitty weekend of conference room and it sounded like a fucking brick hit the wall, eh? dirty bastard. It sounds like a fucking wrestling match where like the other one guy will end up getting dropped and he'll be counting and they'll just like, stop counting. Do you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a great life. I'll drive him. It sounds like a great life, don't it? Like you're making up your own heavyweight titles and all. You're going off to fight for him. You're referee and you come back. to miss. What you do for the week? I just won the fucking Bolivian heavyweight title, baby. I'm fucking going places. Do you know what I mean? It's like fucking. Right. He's fucking creating his own reality, kind of. Isn't he? So fire, like. Well, and I, I'd, I'd bet dollars to donuts that more people will be at this event than were at Conor Ben's fight. Probably will be, to be honest. He, Conor Ben probably called from pretty pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro Tabares, Andy. That's the one. Pedro Tabares. Yeah. yeah. He's the guy All roads lead to sell, Farah. Yeah. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Congratulations on what you accomplished, Shakur Stevenson. Now, time to vacate the title. Really enjoyed your career. Shit. <laughs> 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 Oscar, you fucking fake ab having shit out of you. <laughs> Oscar knows the score. He knows what's all happened. Then he'll be back when she's good. He might return yet. Someone pitted him prime for prime. <laughs> 
Dickens, Campbell, Hatton, <laughs> the boxing hoe. Yeah, the golden think, like, shower versus the golden boy. It would be interesting to see what Eddie does with him next because he can't be far off. But I'm not going to be tempting fate, but you know, but, but if 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 Eddie can't get him winning semi decent fights this year, he's going to be looking to release them surely. No, I don't know what he's going to do with him. Put him in against Connor. Hatton versus Ben. Nah. Hands Connor would probably against. tell you the Connor would probably tell you that Campbell's only has only as many fights as Connor has knockouts. Why would he do that? Hands of foam versus hands of clone. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Connor. He's loving life. Right. Can't, can't break an egg versus the king of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Malinaji believes Cambosos will get dominated against Lomachenko. Should retire afterwards. Cambosos <laughs> wasn't too happy. He said, and I believe you haven't been relevant since 2013. When AB took your girl and belt, you've been beaten up by MMA fighters in bare knuckle and sparring and kicked out of events since. You believe your own bullshit. Got one thing right, though. Cambosos depositing another hefty check. You <laughs> <laughs> took that personally, Cambosos. Eh? <laughs> Stop bragging about my side piece. But, uh, just, pussy. Just, just on Polly, right? Go on the Pro Box TV YouTube account and go back to run about the, the fight. Um, they were talking about the stoppage with Tony Weeks. Remember that shocking stoppage? Mm. What fight was it again? Anyways, Polly goes on about, I say, I say ask the question if Tony Weeks has got a gambling addiction. Right? It's fucking hilarious, man. Well, he's a mental case. The, <laughs> yes. as, 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 in terms of calling the sport, he's the best in the biz. By far, I think he's the best analyst, he best goes commentator. Off some, like, he goes but off in some fucking rabbit rab- holes. He's a man. People forget in the aftermath of him losing to Broner <clears throat> when he had them. You know, stop bragging about my side piece. You don't get pussy. He then said, "It's very clear. It's very clear." Uh, Al Heyman, uh, this judge is a New York judge. He's in Al Heyman's pocket. Blah blah blah. Next week, sign with Al Heyman. <laughs> the next week, he signed with the PBC. He's a fucking shameless. Maniac, and that whole shit with Conor McGregor it was embarrassing, and that's what knocked him off his perch along with some release of footage, baby. Yeah, along with some crazy leanings that he has on Twitter, or whatever. But fair play to Cambosis, as bad as he is in the ring, he's good on Twitter. He he's very good on Twitter. Kind of praise, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Mental that check that should have been Maxi Hughes's hefty check. Anyway, we'll move on. Um, yeah, you could have he- Lomachenko in the UK. You guys got fucked. Well, he came before. To he fight came for uh, Luke Campbell, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Campbell, yeah, Campbell did right. okay in yeah, he did. Okay. He did. He did. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who wins? Fan scorecard. Uh, ben fifteen percent. Spence eighty five percent. Then I think it was was it David Palmer nominated the fifteen percent who voted for Ben. Although you don't know what kind of condition Spence is in at the moment. Or, you just never know, do you? That's so great though. Seventeen out of twenty people think that he can't beat a guy who's flown a car through the air, has a detached retina, <laughs> is recovering he's got the from shit beaten out of him by Bill Crawford <laughs> in a fucking career end and fucking performance, but he still beat Conor Ben. <laughs> Uh, Ricky Gaville sent this one in to me. Oof. Tyson Fury. Can't help getting injured in sparring, but what I can say was Usyk was in trouble. And then Coney jumped in and said either he's on a massive blag or he only owns one pair of boxing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen this by this. is so well. And he started on about, on about his phone. I think it, they can model a phone. and then Oh, went that's right, yeah. They went and checked to see what, model, what year the model had been released. I'm like, weirdos, man. This is, it. This is the one. Aye. That phone on the wall. <laughs> People are trying to fucking insinuate that Tyson Fury is somewhat dishonest. <laughs> <laughs> disgusting, Rob. Disgusting. Get well, life. Who was it? Was it was it Fat Dan went on about? It? He, he rhymed off all the like. No, it was Chris Lloyd. That's who it was. Tell me you got Chris Lloyd list of offences. I don't think there. so. No, I don't think I've got him. Richard Holy D. Hall is making a documentary about it as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Out in Saudi, climbing up flipping walls and stuff. Yeah. Anthony Crawler doing it there? <laughs> Anthony Crawler's in the gym with a fucking <laughs> body cam on him. <laughs> Good man, if I can. There was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of there was a lot of people saying as like the conspiracy theory has gone down a lot of rabbit holes. Like you've got Dave Allen coming out saying that he never spars with a head, he never spars with headgear, but in the video he's sparring with headgear. You've got like. Um, People claiming it's Jay Apatai. You've got like Tyan Boot saying he clearly fucking Spiked doesn't get hit with the elbow. Yeah, yeah, like that's all stage and that. He walks back to the camera. I don't know. Like I just think it, he got caught inspiring. Like it's and it's probably what's made believable. 
Tyson Fury slashed himself or Jay Pattaya actually elbowed him. Look, I just think you put shit out in the atmosphere, sometimes it comes back to bite you. I think that's more something to do with that. Like, Absolutely. Well, that could go for Mauricio Suleiman as well in our final but one. A bit of perspective here. Mauricio tweeted out, a sad and difficult day in boxing as Japanese boxer Kazuski Anaguchi died from injuries sustained during his fight in December. Tyson Fury was cut during sparring. This ring of fire was postponed. And Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed, died at 76. So a couple of deaths. There is they, no always, they always come in threes. You know, talking about the same you mentioned Mauricio Suleiman. I was going to say it myself before he same popped up with that. I said he would be on his knees crying at that news, by the way. And then literally. Gutted. <laughs> what one do you think bothers him the most? Oh, I know exactly. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> well, he's in mourning clearly, or if you already cut because he's mentioned it in the same breath as two deaths. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of die last week. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, uh, right, uh, Matty. I can't remember if it was you or someone tagged me into this as well. Uh, we'll go through it as quick as we can, but uh, the wordsmith that is Walter over. <laughs> Talking about DAZN, I thought this was very good, actually. Walter went in on DAZN over, what is it, <laughs> Pilot or something? He says, a stand innovation for DAZN, Masters of the Subscription Bait and Switch. And then he says, congratulations, DAZN, you've earned a full five-star rating from me, but not for the reasons you'd hope. I'm awarding you for being undisputed champions in the art of misleading subscriptions. <laughs> Take a bow for your exceptional performance in the world of subscription deception, entrapping customers like myself into a 12-month maze with no clear exit. And then he got chucked into them. He says, I thought signing up for a one-time boxing event was a straight jab, clear and direct, but in a twist more complex than any fight strategy, I found myself caught in a 12-month chokehold, dra draining funds from my account monthly. <laughs> he goes on, does Walter... You don't mention you're feeling scammed, etc., etc. Sneaky fine print. They draw you in, then lock the door. So be wise and keep your eyes wide open, says Walter. He goes on again. <laughs> he says at the end, with their rapid fire chat closures and stonewalling tactics, one can't help but wonder if they're not just machines programmed in the art of customer discontent rather than human beings capable of empathy and assistance. There you go. <laughs> that is some fantastic. Well, That's I funny, by the way, because someone I, I was searching the Connor Baden fucking name last night on Twitter to see what American Twitter was saying, and they're all flaming him. But somebody was like, Hey, the zone, I paid for this service. And I keep sending you uh, my bank statement to show that you're taking the money, but I'm receiving legal letters. Please sort this out. So not only are they a lot of people hit the contracts, they're chasing them for the payments as well. Fucking cut them off at the source. Change your bank account. Just block their um, fucking... Yeah, exactly. This guy's go going to too the bank far. And end, just go to the bank and tell them to fucking end the fucking payments. Instruct, fuck, Jesus, man. Exactly. Take it back to the days of Box Nation. You, heard, you know how to do this, boxing fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take the Box Nation. But there you go. That's Walter, anyway. Right. Just, Box just Nation was like the mafia. You were never leaving that man. It was fucking. There was only one way out. <laughs> you, you remember a few years ago how there were just multiple documentaries that came out within months months of each other about the fire festival and all the fucking yes. bullshit yeah, yeah. behind it. Don't you get the hunch that there's going to be a bunch of documentaries about the zone in the coming years? <laughs> With Eddie. Please. No one will see him. <laughs> see if I took the time to send that review by the way, or it would they be polite as that? It would be full of fucking everything. <laughs> Walter throwing bombs, Andy. Who you got? Any nominations this week? Hey, I'm a bank for trying to. I, I've interest in my credit card statement by the way. I went through them like, oh, I tell you what, mate. I was just no prisoners. Oh, it's just standing for it, mate. You, you <laughs> fucking, hey, you want to get money? You, me, you better be on your p's and q's. You better know what you're asking for because uh, you ain't fucking get out of me unless it's fucking legit, man. Um, if I've ever got Hearn just for like shit on that PBC card, I, I take his point, but at the same time, the brass neck of this fucker, man, he come out and says it's a good card. Says, but hey, uh, he says just stick, just stick loads of fights on it. He says I've done it plenty of times myself. <laughs> I mean, no, mate, the charge, but is it seventy dollars for it? Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, Tim Zoo literally just putting Keith Furman on notice and that, so fucking Furman better have his hospital bed sort of that. And uh, Devin Haney is for just basically saying that Conor Ben's power has been left in the needle. So That was a good one. I should have called that. Like, that was a good one. I one, one for that one. Mate. Lovely. Matty, what have you got for us, please? I think that you have to give it uh, to, uh, again, to uh, the uh, Ben promotion and the fact that there's uh, such shitty fucking attendance for that fight, his uh, his jump to America has gone just awfully, 
and uh, there's obviously no marketing genius behind this guy whatsoever. It's just pathetic what they're doing, and they have to be losing money hand over fist. Yeah, the only way is up for Connor Ben. Any nominations from you, Rob? Uh, yeah, just Connor Ben uh, for his response to Josh Kelly when he was like, "You're not." Are you? Josh Kelly was like, "I, I could cook." Connor Ben, and he was like, "Stay cooking in those leisure centers you're fighting in. You're not relevant." Not really realizing that he was fighting at fucking the time. The only time Dan Raphael would see him at when they have the buffet in Las Vegas, like he's fucking fighting at one o'clock in the afternoon, talking about fellas not relevant, and he can't knock out pistol piece. So. Hands down has to be Conor Ben, the most unlikable fighter in boxing today, as it stands. Good stuff. Right, let's go through them quickly before we make our picks and get out of here. Nothing from Oz. Uh, Tyson Fury got nominated. The cut is genuine, says Tyson. We had uh, Thurman. <clears throat> Rick Glazer going in on Thurman. The Rick Glazer account as well. Uh, we've got Khan talking about Haney. We've got the round table. Uh, Crawford got a mention. Opportunities are rising. Opportunities for Lara as well. He can keep doing this, he says, till the end of time. Uh, Shakua down on his knees. Listen to old Justin there with the Isaac Lowe tweet. We had Saul Farah against Mikado for the ninth time. We've got Oscar going in on Shakua. Oscar against Hands of Foam. We've got uh, Cambosos owning Malinage. The fan scorecard. Sly Eddie. Fury with his boxer shorts. And Mauricio Suleiman failing to read the room. And the old based bait and switch from Walter there with the review for the zone and all the ones the boys threw in as well. Andy, who are you going for this week? Episode five five eight. I'll go for Fury, mate. Just for the banner. Go for Fury this week. Who are you going for, Matty? Connor Ben. Come on, Ooh. Connor Ben and Matchroom. Might as well put them together since they just have to. Yeah, be but it's, it's, it's becoming a bullying segment. This mate, if we can keep voting on Eddie and bully stuff. of the week. Fuck it, I, I'm taking it back. I'm going to vote for Conor Ben as well. Fuck it. There you go. <laughs> there you are. I'll throw mine as well. Threesome. A bully in. Rob, are you going for? Oh, Vince McMahon. Stupid a bully again. never hurt anybody, but just be careful of this guy's mental health when you're talking about him. You know what I mean? He's very right. fragile. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's be kind of Morgan bad. again. National TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just got to, you know, it's like you're walking on eggshells, right? I mean, she... <laughs> <laughs> See, boy, see, see, see the next time you get Conor Ben and Pierce Morgan having an interview, it should be fucking pitted on the X rated channels because you two twats fucking sitting right there, man, on national television. Get them on the fucking X rated channels. Big baby, isn't he, Conor Ben? You, you, yeah. you, what's Devin Haney saying? Uh, could she manage to put you a uh, 32 page dossier? <laughs> Fuck off, you little shit. Seats, asshole. <laughs> he's struggling in Vegas. He might not have a title, but he has a bit of a boost this weekend after his 12 round win over Peter Dobson, Connor Ben, and Matt Shroom and Eddie. You are the Bell of the Week winners for episode 558. Ecstatic. Ecstatic. Excellent there from Connor. Excellent. Right. Right. Excellent. Uh, shout out to David Palmer, our sole super chatter. If you want to join him for in a super chat next week, like, subscribe, do all those beautiful things. Patreon.com forward slash. Boxing Asylum, if you want to join the Prediction League, the WhatsApp group, and all those other bits and pieces. And that is where we shall leave it. Thank you very much to Rapping Rob Kelly for jumping on, to Matty Di Leonardo, Andy Patterson as well. Matty will be in the red hot seat for episode 559. Stay safe out there, everybody. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat and everyone listening through the week. I've been Steve Wellings. Catch you all again, same time, same place next week. And bye. We'll never forget. Yeah, we just got up me. Go to we want to be honest, yeah. Crying like a little bitch. I'm not gonna make a fucking show that can fight me. I, I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep. You're a fucking bum. You're a fucking asshole. Run for fucking stealth skin. But allegedly, Oscar Rivas has has, has failed has failed a test. Seven year age. Seven year age. I will fucking smash fucking you. I hope you fucking die. Be safe. I love boxing science. Simple as that.